What's up, everybody? Last day of Lightbox. And it's going to be a good day. I'm just going to turn down my volume. I like this music. I'm jamming to it, but... Um, but I don't want it to be too loud because then I'll start screaming when I got headphones on. <laughs> so has everybody been having a good time at Lightbox? I know I have. I've been watching what I can. I'm going to go back actually and watch a bunch. I like earmarked a bunch of them and I'm, I'm going to go back and, and, uh, and go after, you know, a couple of them and, and try to gain that knowledge and absorb it. But today we're going to jump right into this. We've got about, uh, we've got about three hours um, where we could work on this portrait of Sam. Now, what I've done, because like a lot of times when I'm working on a portrait, like the block in is, you know, it's eh, it's it's interesting for people to see. But you can see my methodology here without having to, you know, watch the whole entire process. And so I just did a quick block in, and I might have to change some things. I might have to fix some things, um, and and adjust it. But I just wanted to get like lights and darks and stuff like that so that we could kind of jump into the process. Um, and I'm probably going to have to change a little bit, but I want to give you some understanding of my thinking uh, first before I dive into that. Um, a lot of, when I talk about doing an a la prima portrait, um, the a la prima style of things is really, it just means all at once. That means all at once. And so if you're using um, oil paint, you got to do it while it's wet, right? So you got to work on the oil paint while it's wet and you've got to mix paint into paint, like wet into wet. And so you're doing it all in one session. And so, um, so that's really, uh, you know, what, what Ala Prima is about. So the key thing about it, cause you know, everybody looks at Sargent's paintings or someone like that. And they're like, oh, it's so loose. So cool. The brush strokes are so, you know, interesting. And they're like, I want to get that. But a lot of it's the prep work. So this stage, this stage becomes really, really important. Like just getting this stuff in the right place you know, getting all of this to work and, and making sure that you've got like the lighting, like the lights and the darks in the right place is a huge step in, in getting, um, getting that look that, that I'm going for that a la prima, that sort of wet on wet and, and loose look. Um, so anyways, so my thinking here is to break it down into lights and darks. So technically this side over here, I'm considering in the shadows, right? So that side over here, this side of Sam's face, it's catching reflected light, right? And you look at over here, you're like, man, look at that. But look at how much darker that is than the light side. So you feel like when you look at this, well, it's light, right? I'm going to make it the same value as this. Well, if I bring that value in, it's going to be awful, right? So this is still the shadow side. That's definitely still the shadow side. And I'm going to treat it that way. Um, and so this will probably, actually, now that I'm looking at this, this will probably group up more like this. Like there's a little bit of a shadow that kind of creeps in there and I'm gonna make the brush a little bigger. Let's, uh, sometimes Photoshop does some, there we go. There's some weird stuff with the sizing of my particular brush, but it's gonna be more like that. This will probably, you know, I'll probably end up carving it out like that a little bit more. We'll see, I, there might be some issues there proportion wise, but basically <clears throat> what I'm going for is trying to get the big shapes in the right place and the big shapes of light and dark. And that's sort of how I'm approaching this from the from the get go. Um, and so when I'm thinking about the block in and, and what I need down that I'm trying to think about the lighting. That's my primary concern is the lighting. That's what's going to give me that realistic effect. And that's what's going to set me up for the later stages. So I just kind of wanted to talk about that. Um, good to see everybody. Wing Dante, Rayguard, Navaparta. Uh, you know, CH Dragon, I, I banned that. CH Dragon, I think that was a bot. So, uh, Mellow Edwards, good to see you in here. Prog Power, what's up, everybody? Let's get this rolling. Let's get it rolling. Oh, by the way, before I get fully into this, you guys remember I said that I want to, uh, for everybody that's subscribed to me, by the end of this, this session, I'm going to, uh, you know, um, uh, do some giveaways. Well, I created like a special, I'm going to change this chat thing. Like it looks like it's disappearing in a weird spot. Hold on. Uh, kind of, I'm going to put this like in the middle here. There we go. I got that working. It wasn't working before for some reason, but um, we'll put that there. That's fine. Um, but uh, I've got, look, check this out. I've got a, a special thing in store for you guys. If everybody's here at the end, and even if you're not here, if you're subscribed to me, I'm going to, I'm going to let you, uh, let you have a, 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 a spin on the prize wheel. Check this out. Look at <laughs> So there's many, many uh, interesting prizes that you can win. <laughs> there's one of my textures up there, the 
the head, you know. <laughs> so we're 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 gonna have some fun with that. Um, and uh, <laughs> have fun, have fun doing that. So, all right. So let's let's get through this. We'll do that at the end of this uh end of this session. And and I think on my stream, I think once a month, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you know um like the top five or not the top five, but just I'm gonna pick randomly like five people from the subscriber list and I'm gonna spin the wheel for them. And I think it'd be fun to do that once a month. So um, the compliments said to you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, that, that one was, uh, that was particularly funny. Like a vague but encouraging compliment. <laughs> oh, we got some fun stuff planned for that. So it's gonna be good. It's kind of like I'm imagining that as kind of like being a UHF and like you know the wheel of fish. That you guys might be too young for that. I, I might be showing my age here, but you know wheel of fish. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember that, but <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna grab another layer here. Now what I'm gonna do is at this point I've got like a block in that's fairly decent, right? So this block in is fairly decent. I feel pretty good about it. Um, you know I, I like where things are, are where you know where the placement of things are. So what I'm gonna do now is start diving in and I'm gonna start indicating values and I'm gonna start indicating um, uh, colors as well. I'm gonna be doing all that. Now let's see here, why is this giving me trouble? Uh, why is it giving me trouble? Hmm, hold on a second. Uh, why am I not getting, I'm doing, oh, I know why. I've got it on clear mode, duh. So I have a, on my sense labs on this uh on on this um uh, remote you know i've got it set up and i can switch very quickly from normal mode which is going to be like this like just a normal mode like that and then a clear mode which you can it's the same exact brush and but it just erases so instead of coming up here and switching like this i that's uh that tends to be the way that i'll work and it's really nice because you can you can um basically erase with the same brush that you're using and, and keep it consistent which is nice so Good afternoon to you too. I've got the like. Uh, oh, that's Julia. What's up? Good to see you. Your name's in black on here, so it was hard for me to see. Um, but I, I see it now. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. So let's start this off. Let's get some of these values indicated, and I, I'll be able to carve out these shapes later. You know, but I just want generalities at this point. I want generalities, and I want. Um, I want to get an idea of where the colors are heading, where the values are heading. And you can see, of course, as it goes to the left, it becomes much more orange. The value scheme does change a little bit. I'm gonna drop in some skin tones just to have sort of a basis to work from. So I know how warm to go in these other areas. This is actually gonna get warmer here. To make sure I keep the values consistent. Um, I, I like to come in pretty strong with the colors at first because um, it, it tends to work out better that way. Uh, as I render and as I work on things, like things tend to get dull and get darker and, and or, or uh, not darker, um, the color gets a little bit less saturated and stuff like that. So I like to err on the side of making it a little bit more saturated up front. Okay, let's see here. This is gonna be a little warmer in here. Boom, 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 like that. That's a little more desaturated, but I'll leave it slightly saturated in there for the, for this stage at least. So again, it, it ends up looking, it kind of looks clownish like at first when I'm dropping things in. But one of the other things that I'm very, that, that I, I'm paying attention to is that I keep the value scheme more towards the mid range. A lot of times I've noticed when people are doing skin, um, you know, especially Caucasian skin, they'll come in like this. And even with black skin, they'll come in like this with black skin, like, very very light when you want to stay towards you almost want to like you almost want to start from the mid-range of the values that you're going to be using for that particular skin type you know and everybody's skin is different but it's but you want to kind of find the mid-range of where you need to be with that and um and start there so that you have a place to to move up and a place to go down like it, it works much much better it's like trial and error, error over the years i've realized how much of a difference that really makes um, because you kind of use up all your value relationships at first when you when you go too bright. Um, and you could intentionally do that, of course. You can intentionally make something very, very, you know, high key or bright or whatever. You can do that. But um, 
But in general, it usually works if you're trying to just go for straight realism and you're just trying to stay consistent. Um, it, it usually works much better to start from a mid range. So this is going to be very, very orange over here, of course. This side too. So again, I'm starting there. Starting there, but I do get some some warmer like this this area here it's going to be a little bit lighter but sort of like a yeah like a warmer pink like that it's kind of it's a tricky color to see because it's next to so many vibrant colors that it makes it tough to kind of figure that out but but this eye is definitely going to be different than like the eye on the left is going to be a different color scheme than the eye on the right which is which is going to make this interesting but i do want them both to read as part of the shadows so i need to uh Need to do that this is going to be actually pretty cool like like so this eye is not purple right i'm looking at this it's not purple it's not you know sticking out as as a hardcore purple but i see a little bit of purplish like bluish tones in there so i like to indicate that from the beginning because um like i said color is going to get more dull the more i start you know messing with it and so if i can indicate that from the beginning um and then i can get that color established and as i work into it it'll get it'll be you know a little bit less saturated as time goes on and stuff but it starts me off in the right place definitely starts me off in the right place i definitely see some warmer areas here but again this is all about the general impression and uh let's let's get some of this hair it's a little bit lighter but i'm gonna go up in here let's see this shadow is pretty similar to that one I'm gonna get this one indicate it's a little more warm though so this is what i'm doing like as i'm going and i'm putting something down i'm like oh it needs to be warmer it needs to be cooler it needs to be a little bit more like this it needs to be you know i'm thinking that in my head and making those judgment calls and like i said i may have to adjust some of the proportion but we'll see um it might be fairly close though we'll see like i, I won't I'm, I'm as close as i can get right now before i have the information put down once i have more information down then i'll be able to see a lot more clearly but even on the edge of this nose, like on the edge of his nose, the tip of his nose, I mean, there's a little bit of like, it's right as it turns into shadow, it's it's sort of like a purplish color there. It's really interesting. Like it's not uh, an overt color change, but there's something going on there that's that's really interesting. And, uh, you know, I want to try to capture that. Let's see, the upper lip is going to be definitely more of a red like that um, and this side actually gets a little bit more pinkish like that I mean so you can see the kind of we're, we're easing our way into this starting with mid-range easing our way into it this whole section is a bit more of a orangey kind of sandy brown kind of thing uh, I need this green in here too so this green is gonna function as a really good color reference right so once i get this green in here then all of a sudden the other colors like like they'll make a little bit more sense next to this because you know whatever colors are going to be near something um it's going to have an impact on the way the other colors are are perceived um which sounds weird but it actually is is very very true so um i'll show you what i mean so let's say i can do it back here yeah I've showed this before, but let's say you've got like a uh, a blue area like this and an orange area. Let's go like right here with these two. And then if I put a gray dot in between this and in between this, like if you look at just the dot itself, this this one looks like if you're if you're trying to compare them back and forth, this one looks more blue than this one. Right, it looks cooler because of what it's next to, and the more I, the bigger I make that, the more pronounced it'll it'll get. I'll show you. So if we do this, and then, you know, uh, let's let's make it in the middle here. Right now, you now you look at this one, and you look you're trying to if you look at them both at the same time, you're like, this one is definitely more blue, you know. And for some reason, when it when something appears cooler, it it feels darker too. So. But basically the idea is that color is relational. Color is absolutely relational and you need to think about what's around something in order to get a clear idea of how it's, how, you know, you want to paint it. Like, because as soon as you put a color down, it's, it's, it's there and the other colors are going to have to interact with it visually. So 
this kind of comes in it's really interesting it kind of hits that pattern of his shirt and kind of comes in like this like this this comes in and we're getting there we're getting there this comes up like this this will cut through that area and I can make the block in a little less uh, uh, opaque like that there we go and then we'll stay underneath here for a little bit longer and then I'm gonna jump in and start making what I'll, I'll call like the big form modeling stage where I'm gonna keep things very very general but just try to try to get the masses in place and get uh, really lock down the values and the structure of his face so this is sort of like a combined method of um, uh, blocking it in based on like the classical way where you're blocking in the shapes of light and dark but I'm also really thinking about the structure and you'll see that in the next step that's sort of what I've adapted or, like over the years is like a like a combination of the techniques so this is not quite as orange this is gonna be a little bit more like ah eh, and it's pretty pretty orange there even okay I want to make sure I'm getting your questions and stuff let me let me take a look real quick get this arm in this should be darker to the shadow Colors are really mingling in a, in a very interesting way on this one. It's going to be really fun. See how I'm avoiding like making everything super light as well. I don't make I don't want to make everything super light right now. I want to stay like I said closer to that mid range. All right, let me see what you guys are saying. Um, happy Sunday stream. What's up? Hello. Forty two screaming bees. That's like the best name ever. Forty two screaming bees. I absolutely love that. <laughs> oh man all right the escapologist oh that makes sense nice good 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 all right uh let's see greetings from the netherlands oh yeah no problem kanoa good to see you in here thank you for the lesson at all prima digitally yeah for sure for sure and i'm gonna be using some cool brushes like i'm gonna i'm gonna grab some of this and use some some cool brushes to accomplish this once we uh we get to the point where we can start laying down those interesting strokes, you know. Um, uh, uh, no, you arrived too late. No, you didn't arrive too late. Don't worry. And actually, guys, just so you know, I'll be saving this. Um, I'll be saving uh, these and putting them up on my YouTube channel. I just want to check with Lightbox to make sure they're cool with that. Um, but if they're cool with that, then I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it up on my YouTube channel, which is just YouTube.com slash Jonathan Hardesty. And, and I'll put the full stream up on there. It'll be fun to put it up there. Um, and uh and so uh, so you guys can watch it there it'll be on my twitch uh, account too like i think it stays up there for like seven days or something like that is the is the default or whatever but um okay uh wing dante if color is relational like that does that mean the first color you put down the most important of the painting very interesting question yes well it's not um yes i would say yes it but the first one that you put down is like I would say the first one that you put down is it can't be wrong. You know what I mean? Um, now you could have an idea in mind of what you wanted to do for the painting. And that first color that you put down is not, not right, you know? Um, and so you, then you, then you'd be in trouble, but, but you're right. It's, it's, everything is relational that way. So as long as you keep the warms and the cools, like, is this, you know, is this the same exact color as that skin? Probably not. Is this the same color as that skin? Probably not even close. You know, what about this orange that's over here? Well, that one's a little bit more red on the original. So what? You know, that stuff is, it's like, it just needs to relate properly. That's the key thing. It needs to relate. And if it does, you'll be okay. Why is it not letting me um, undo with this? Hold on a second. Uh, one sec. Why won't you let me undo? Did I do something weird? Okay, that's weird. There we go. It wouldn't let me undo for a second. I don't know why. Photoshop's like, oh, stream labs and everything. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's the same with proportion. So let's say I'm blocking in this head, right? And I'm doing it over here. And let's say the top of the head, like there's an angle that goes like this. And then this this whole front of the face comes down at an angle like that. 
Well, if I do the front of that face, I can make it whatever size I want, right? As long as I have the angle the same as this one, when I go to this angle is when it starts to matter, right? And then where this angle comes off, this angle needs to come off the same way. So I can take that shape and convert it. Like it's relational, right? That shape is relational. And so I just need to be able to keep that. It's the same with color and value, exactly the same. So um, a lot of people obsess, and this happens with oil paints too. Like a lot of people obsess with oil paints. They obsess about getting the exact color they're seeing. Like when they're hold it up to the, the you know, um, to what they're painting and i actually even saw like a like a, a guy who was selling like a painting method and he was like put a dab of paint on the thing and hold it up and i was like oh no because that's really encouraging people to do the wrong thing it's not encouraging them to work relationally it's encouraging them to copy what they're seeing which is not you really can't do that and you know i'm looking at a photo here for reference but when you're looking at something in reality sometimes it's just too light or too dark like you can't if I'm painting a sunset, how the heck am I going to paint a sun, you know, that's going to blind people when they look at it? Like, you you just can't, right? It has to be relational. And so this is what I talk about in my um, Essentials of Realism class. Like, this is a big, like, soapbox for me on in that class because um, because I was, I was sort of, when I was training, they taught copying a lot. Like, they taught copying, and it kind of didn't make sense to me. So I had to figure out a way on my own to, to you know, see how things really should be done and i started studying a bunch of artists and looking at them and then i realized what what was different about what they were doing um illustrators also like fine artists like sergeant and people like that I, I figured out what was different from what they were doing than what i was doing and i was like oh they're working relationally I, and i realized it was really funny too because i went to a um a clayton beck seminar like shortly after that and clayton beck studied with richard schmidt and stuff he's a great artist really really cool guy too and and I, and I was like going up to him afterwards because he was talking about relationships in the in the uh, workshop. And I was like, oh man, I was just thinking about this. And so I started talking about that, like what I was seeing at the museum. And he was kind of like, yeah, like, oh yeah, that's old news, you know? And I was like, man, nobody told me, you know? So, um, so yeah, I had to kind of figure that out the hard way. So working relationally is absolutely key. And it's tough because your brain, for whatever reason, wants to copy. It doesn't want to do the work of comparing one value or, you know, edge or, you know, area of proportion to another relationally. It wants to just try to copy because that's the easier way to do it. So your brain just kind of defaults into that and you have to stop it. You have to stop your brain from going on autopilot like that. And you have to really think about what you're doing and think about how they relate. And I almost feel like that's easier with imaginative work. Like with imaginative work, it's easier, I feel like, to because you're not looking at a reference as much like you start you can think more relationally but when you're looking at a reference or using one it's there's the temptation to to uh copy what you're seeing is very strong so um and that does come into play you know of course a lot of illustrators use reference but um but yeah it's it's uh it's something you've got, got to constantly think about and yeah it's just not gonna it's not gonna work if uh if you're trying to copy everything because like most of the time you can't or you don't want to copy reality so all right good question though really really good question so yeah the first color it's you can make it whatever you want make the first color whatever you want right i could make this purple uh the the shirt purple right but then i'd have to adjust all the other colors to get them to relate so i might be making my job really hard because i'd have to change everything drastically so it's not that you can't do that but it's like you better have a good reason for why you're doing that and making the colors so drastically different um if you do have a good reason awesome do it there's no rules you know go ahead and and do it but if if you don't have a good reason it's going to create a lot of work for no for not a lot of um gain you know what i mean if you're just changing the colors randomly but like let's say you want to make a character you know much more um uh lovable or something or much more like um you know, uh, kind looking or whatever. You can take the colors and amplify them and you can use a different color scheme, something that's a bit more like pastel or something that you can change the value scheme. You can make it, you can change all those relationships to achieve whatever you want. And I can do the same thing for a portrait like this. Like, what do I want to convey about Sam, right? What do I want to convey about him? And this one for me is going to be about color. This one is going to be about exploring how the color is changing across his face. So I'm gonna keep these colors intensified. That's one of my goals for this. And sort of my like concepts for this is to, is to have his, 
like the color it's like the exploration of color on his face so i really want to amplify the color changes on this and and explore that and sometimes it can just be that simple it doesn't need to be anything you know insanely doesn't you know it doesn't need to be some some big i super big idea that no one's ever done before or something like that you know sometimes it's just hey i want to i want to explore the color color flow and the and the the shift into this warm shadow you know that can be enough but it just gives me priorities and a way to to uh, approach things okay let's see let's get that this is a little bit warmer here okay thank you for everybody that's following as well i appreciate it um you know uh yeah definitely do that and uh, that way you can see when i'm live again and i'm going to be streaming a lot more coming up and um and I'm, I'm just having a blast i got settled here finally in texas so looking forward to streaming some more getting back to it and i've got a better internet situation here if anybody that was with me before knows that i had an issue <laughs> out in the country in pennsylvania well, it's much better here so all right so what i'm going to do now is i've got like in general i'm just going to look through and just make sure i've got like a general idea for the values and the colors um let's see this gets a little bit darker down here i'll i'll put this in just in case i decide to go down there and we'll be here now i'm going to take this block in and make it a little bit less opaque and um i'm seeing things like this needs to be warmer too now that that block in's not in there i'm seeing like like because remember i want to push those colors so i'm seeing that this needs to be adjusted as well i'm going to go back to that layer and do that real quick make this much warmer it's much more red in that ear and again i'll probably have to adjust the drawing a little bit that's fine um it's still got like sort of reads like it reads like the likeness of him pretty well already though i think i'm starting to see it this will be like right here yeah i'm, I'm his, his chin looks super long but i'm i'm getting there and you, you should be able to get sort of a general impression of the person from the get-go. Like, you should be able to get a general impression. I think this chin's higher. We'll see. But maybe not, actually. We'll see. It could just be that this cheek actually needs to come out a bit or something. Like that. Yeah, it could be that, actually. We'll see. Um, maybe I can carve this out a bit. See what I get over there. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump to an upper layer. I'm gonna go above the block in. And I'm gonna start doing what I call the big form modeling. And this is creating almost like a sandblasted version of what's there. So I'm not I'm not worried about the um I'm not worried about the features. I'm not worried about getting everything, you know, rendered and stuff. I gotta really resist that at this point. I don't wanna do that. Um what I wanna do is really focus on getting the uh you know getting getting it to read as like um getting all the masses to read getting things to like, all the colors to read like almost like i said like a sandblasted version like uh, i'll show you what i mean when i do it but it's like describing the form um and creating like the 3d look of like if you could imagine his face as simple shapes sanded down simple shapes like a sculpture that's been sanded down or or you know has had erosion or something like smooth erosion after over time I want to get to that point so that when I put the Alla Prima strokes over top of it, they can sit over top of that rendered um, area underneath. So, um, all right, let's see. Awesome, that would be much pretty appreciated. 14 days, okay, yes, I'll definitely put them up on on YouTube. That'll be really fun. Um, I don't have the uh, the one um, for that I did of the Captain Crunch uh, that I, I did that Captain Crunch portrait uh, for Sense Labs. I don't have that one, but I need to finish. Um, I need to finish the Captain Crunch portrait anyway, so I'll, I'll, maybe I'll film me finishing it. But I love this content. You can explain that on your schools, of course. Yeah, Julia, that's right. Yeah, how you change colors from the reference and push them, make them more saturated. Yes. But if the relationships are right, the image would look right. Exactly. So, and depending on what you want to convey, it will change things. So, like, if you look at Soroya, let's look at, like, a Soroya painting. And let's just look at some of his paintings, right? So, I like to show this. This is what I show in my course, too, but it's, like, if you look at the way he paints, like this is kind of what it feels like to be on a shoreline at a beach or something. Like he kind of paints the way you feel when you're at the beach. There's one he's got with these, yeah, like this kind of thing, like with the sunlight hitting them, and it, he's swapping the colors 
and intensifying them and you know like that right there right so you know obviously that's not everybody's taste the the rendering style or whatever is not everybody's taste but if you look at the colors and the way he's capturing the colors he's really enhancing what he's seeing and he's like taking the direction that he sees it and just like pushing it hardcore that direction and it works because it's relational so look at this painting that he did and that you're like oh yeah that looks good that looks real right that looks like reality but then you look at this and you're like well this is a sunny day right here like that like that's got you know or like uh, this one right um and when you see them online too they're always, they're never quite as good as as they are in person when you see them in person it really reads well um yeah like look at that that really gives you the sensation of being outside like the colors that you it's sort of the colors that you feel when you're out there it's funny but uh, but it's all intensified and so uh one of the other things to keep in mind is that when he does this when he takes the colors and intensifies them look at look at this blue and purple that's there um at the front of that water that's pretty dark if you look at the white like foamy area that's pretty that's pretty light and you can see how dark the the water is well in order to get the colors to be nice and juicy and saturated you've got to keep them towards that mid-range or darker um i'll show you so if here let's go here let's uh let's put this back in normal mode okay so look if i've got a color like this and i switch colors right there's not much difference between those two colors right let's keep the same colors but let's keep the values pretty dark look you don't they're they're different you could definitely see a difference right but you don't see that much difference when you start focusing on making these colors in the mid-range it's like whoa that's a drastic color difference right so the idea is that the brighter you get the less distinct the colors become and the darker you get there's a certain point where they become sort of indistinct right um you know obviously if you're in a closet and you're holding up a bright red thing and you're holding up a bright blue thing you're not going to see the difference right or if light is shining so bright on both of them you can't you know you're not going to make you're not going to be able to make sense of it so um so yeah so it's it's you know, it's all about understanding what you're seeing, seeing those relationships. Then you can manipulate the values like, oh, I'm, 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 I want color to be a priority, which is what I want on this particular portrait. So that means I've got to drop the values down. So if I come in here like this from the get go and start saying like, oh, well, it's bright here. I'm going to do it like this. Right. Well, that's going to mess up my whole color scheme. Why? Because then when I try to make a value that fits there. I'm gonna have to make it like this and be like, oh, well, that's not light enough, right? So now I've got to go. And then all of a sudden it's almost like a high key painting and the colors aren't really saturated. So um, I have to be careful that I keep all of that intact and really think about all of that. So key part of the process, really key part of the process. All right, so let's go in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my, I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna start working on some of the edges. Like I said, I'm keeping it um, pretty, general at this point but let's start working on that big form and i'm gonna cut see putting down those nice saturated colors now gives me something to color pick from too right so now i can color pick from all these all these nice juicy colors and 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 use them so i'm not color picking from something that's desaturated to begin with which is what happens a lot of times it's like really desaturated to begin with people start really desaturated and then they're color picking which it's it's really interesting how the color picking process digitally really does work. It's the same as oils because um, things get more dull. Things get more dull like over time uh, as you work on them digitally. The same as 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 it is with uh, with um, you know digital. It's like the same. The same thing happens with oil paints that happens here, which is fascinating to me. I think. Because when I color pick this, it it's, yeah, it's a purple, but look how desaturated it is. Look at how desaturated it is. If I take that and put it off to the side, it's not, it doesn't read quite the same. You know, it doesn't read quite the same. It's, 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 it doesn't, it, you know, it's, it's uh, a little tricky, especially when you get some strokes overlapping it and stuff. It's, it, then it really starts to look a lot different. So I'm not worried about the eye features. Not worried about like the eyelashes and all that stuff you know i'm not i'm not thinking about that right now not i'm avoiding all that on purpose and i know he, he'll probably look like he's squinting or he's like upset or whatever <laughs> that's fine i'll i'll have some time to uh to work on that um you know but i'm just like i said i'm getting that generalized 
big form modeling first. So this whole section, I definitely want to get this, you know, area looking rounded, this cheek. And then I also notice other colors. So like in here, there's like some purples that are kind of showing up in here, kind of reddish purples, like at the edge of this. And so I'm gonna get those indicated. It's a little bit darker. And oftentimes I've noticed too that people are like, oh, this color doesn't work for this area. Like I put down a color and it's the wrong color. Most of the time when people say it's the wrong color for an area, they're like, I can't use a green in this part of the skin. I'm like, yes, you can. If you make it the right value, you can. That's too bright. So let's make it a little bit darker. Like I could throw in that green. Look, there's a little green stroke there. It's fine. I could leave that. You know, why not? Um, you know, and so, but a lot of times people see that the color is intense and they're like, oh, you know, this is the wrong color. They come in here in the nose. They're like, I want to put it in red. And they do this. And I'm like, oh, that's just that you made it too dark. It's too dark. You could use that red right here for that transition area. And it works well. So you just have to be very aware of, of what value. You have to see value and color separately, basically. And so that's a, that's a huge part of my process, too, is thinking that way. All right. Let's see what you guys are saying. Kag and I, what's up? Okay, 42 Screaming Bees. I learned so much from that course. Oh, good. Hey, Ratri. Good to see you on here. 42 Screaming Bees. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good to see you. All right. Yeah, I'm streaming again. I'm streaming again, Kag and I. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, yeah, so like my brain, how my brain processes the colors, the color relationship. That, now, this is interesting. This is a good question. So I, I want to encourage you guys because I remember... I'm, I'm a, well, number one, I'm thinking of everything separately. I'm thinking of proportion separate from value, separate from edges. I'm thinking of all that separately. And um, at the same time, I'm just kind of like flipping through it in my head. But I remember going to a workshop and hearing Ron Lemon, who's a great artist, phenomenal guy, can pretty much do anything. And he's, <laughs> I was standing next to him and he was like, well, this blue is warmer than this blue. And I looked at him and I was like, I don't get it. I said, how it's a blue. How can it be warmer than the other blue? I don't understand, you know, and I, I didn't understand, you know, I was like, I don't get it, you know, and, and I really didn't. And uh, he's like, just give it time. He's like, just think about it. Let it, let it sit in there a little bit and you'll start to understand. He's like, well, it's because it's sort of arbitrary. How we deal with color is sort of arbitrary. Um, you know, we talk about warm and cool and it makes sense for light and dark, but with colors, it goes in a circle, right? So you're like, here's a blue and here's an orange over here. Let's say there was an orange over here and here I'll go hundred percent opacity. Let's go orange and then blue, right? Well, if I'm orange here and let's say that, you know, red is this direction, right? And we've got yellow and green like this direction. I could say to somebody like somebody could say like, well, it needs to be cooler. Well, I could go this direction to get cooler, right? I could go from green to this and then go down here. Right, or I could go all the way through red and then get to you know purple and then end up here and and go that way, right? So color's a little bit weird because you have multiple paths to get there. So remember that any kind of tool that anybody says like warm or cool or that like there's warm shadows and cool lights or cool shadows and warm lights, it's really just a way to give you a scheme to work in, like it gives you a foundation to work in, and um and gives you something to to ground yourself with the relationships and and be able to see get a handle on things from the get-go um but honestly like you can get away with a lot of decisions color wise that you'd be surprised about um you could just do whatever you want pretty much color wise as long as the values and the edges and the proportion work it'll probably look realistic and it won't be too bad um so but having said that what i do when I'm looking at something is I'm very good now because I've done a lot of oil painting. So I've had to mix colors. So I look at something and I'm pretty good at like judging what the color is, like how I would mix that if I wanted to try to get the exact thing. Right. So I've had a lot of practice with that. Um, so that side is in there for me and you can, you can practice that, like trying to match colors. I think you should, it's helpful. Um, cause that way you're like, I need this color, you know, where to pick it, how to get it stuff. But then I start to look for what's happening. So like, if I look right here, this is kind of like this color, right? It's uh, it's this color. And it's sort of like a, you know, semi-pink, like, flesh tone, right? And that's occurring, like, right there. Uh, right there, right? So that's occurring right there. Now, when I look at this, I'm like, well, this definitely gets warmer, right? Like, as it goes down to this part of the cheek, like, this feels like it gets warmer. 
right? It feels like it, it, but it looks, it looks more different on the reference than it does when I come and color pick and put it over here. It looks just barely different when I do it over here, but it definitely looks like it gets warmer, almost like rusty colored or whatever. So then I'll say, okay, well, the value changes slightly, but it definitely heads this direction, right? So that's why I did this and I take that, that information and I boost it, right? So then I say, well, I'm, I think it becomes more of like a rust color-ish, the orangish rust color kind of thing. And I'm going to really make it that color. Bam. Right now, I need to know what value that needs to be there, but I'm going to make a decisive decision about what that color is. And it's it's almost like understanding the concept of reality and then um, and then just enhancing it, right? So like imagine like a, I don't know, like a, like a wing on a car, like a a rear wing on a car or something like that, or I don't know, like some kind of thing on the fender or something. And you look at this design and then you're like, all right, I've got the idea of this. When it comes over the wheel well, it does this, right? But then you're like, I'm going to take that and enhance it. And on your car, you're like, Woof, you kind of do that, right? It's not that you're defi like, you're not defying what's there in reality, but reality becomes the springboard then. Um, I remember someone saying to Richard Schmidt like one time, it was funny, um, one of the greatest painters and artists ever, really. I mean, he's just, He's like Gurney, where it's just like a lifetime of 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 work and effort and just I mean, it just, you know, he was one of the best of our generation. And um, that was sad to hear he died. I think he died like just under a year ago, I think. Um, but uh, but I remember somebody like at a, uh, I have a demo of his and he was like painting outdoors and they were like, well, you know, how do you how do you go about like, you know, enhance, like exaggerating the colors and doing things like that? And, and um, he was like, I don't exaggerate the colors. Like he got like offended. He was like, I don't exaggerate the colors. He's like, they're there in nature. And he started like painting out the colors. And and I was kind of like looking at it and I was thinking, you do, you do. <laughs> I was like, you know, no offense. I was like, but you do. Cause it doesn't look like that. Like what he was painting, it looks close to that, but it's much more enhanced and it's much more. It's just the fact that he has trained his mind to look for those colors and he's he had he did a bunch of impressionist work like early on so he was always looking for colors and he understood that language and and he just saw it so easily that to him it was like well this is what it is like this is what it is i'm looking at it this is what it is and to everyone else they're like yeah but it actually looks more dull than that to the rest of us you know and to him if he had to match it up and hold up the paint daub it would look more dull what it, what he would do but but he was using his artistic eye and saying, this is the direction it slants and I'm gonna kind of push it that direction. So that's basically what I'm doing. I, that's the best way for me to give you um, insight into kind of what I'm thinking is I always am looking for the direction that it goes and then sort of pushing it further um, and, and just taking that and running with it. Imagine it like this. This is a way to think about it, right? You have a, you're drawing a figure and somebody's got like hips that come out, right? So like maybe in reality, like their hips would come out like this and you know, like their legs would come out and you'd see like a little bit of the hip on the side or whatever. But then when somebody's drawing a gesture, they may be like, boom, like that. They may, they may like take the hips and totally push them out like that with a gesture. So it's not that you're defying what's there in reality. You're not, you are changing it in a sense, but you're kind of using it as a springboard, like I was saying. and building off of that so it's it's the same thing with color like you just have to get good at looking for the right things and same thing with gesture drawing you have to get good at looking for the right things and i'm still working on that you know i'm i'm definitely still working on that side for sure um but but it's the same principle i think so that you know would be useful that's that's the best insight i can give to sort of what's going on in my head um and and you have to it's it's honestly one of those things that you have to you have to spend time uh, looking for it. And, um, you know, and after you spend a long time looking for it, you'll sort of naturally just sort of see that stuff and it will make sense to you. And you'll, you'll start seeing those colors and, and, you know, but I, I, I felt like that at first. I felt like when Ron Lemon was telling me, you know, Hey, this is a, a cooler blue and this is a warmer blue. I'm like, how can a blue be warm at all? Like it didn't make any sense to me. And so, um, so, you know, I, I had to, had to learn the same thing. So I was starting from that point as well, where I was like, I don't understand what you're talking about, you know? So, um, and then I got there by just looking at it and being like, oh, that's what, that's how they're seeing it. I remember going into my teacher and saying when I was training, when I first started training and they were more of the classical slant. So they had, 
um, you know, sort of more, like I said, like the copying mentality. And I went in and my teacher was putting down this, like, I remember this purple for a model's leg. And I said, I don't, I said, I don't understand how you see that color. It looks more grayish to me. How, how are you seeing that as a purple? And she was like, I don't know. I just see it as a purple. Like the, she didn't know. She said, you don't see it as a purple. And I said, no. And, but then I thought to myself, I was like, there's nothing wrong with me. I was like, there's no, I know there's nothing wrong with me. I know my eyes are not broken. I was like, so there's gotta be something else. So that's when I got to kept exploring and thinking about what, what I need to learn to, to be able to see things that way. And, you know, and the pro the thing is, is that most artists, like when they get to that point, they've sort of, it's part of their subconscious and they've sort of um, relegated that part to their subconscious and they, they just forgot. Like they don't know why they know this. They don't know why they see that color. They just see it. Cause it's been so long since they've thought about that, that they just are like, I don't know. I just, I see it that way, you know? And, and so, um, and they're being genuine. But for me, I started from when I was 21, I had never drawn a thing. So for me, I was able to to really like break all that down and say, well, how do I actually learn to see this? Because I don't see any of that, you know? So, um, yeah, so it's interesting. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a tough thing to convey, I think, like how the approach there, it's a very tough thing to convey, but, but hopefully that helps make it, help, helps it make a little more sense. It's the best way I can sort of describe it, I think, but. All right, let's see. So this would be like an eyebrow that comes up like this. This one would probably come up a little bit. This would come over. Now the mouth and the nose are a little bit weird. I'm gonna to have to get a little bit more specific with these. I think I'm gonna end up moving the mouth up a bit. Yeah, this is gonna, yeah, because this is gonna to need to come up. I believe that's what needs to happen. Although I don't wanna to go too far over. Maybe the nose does come down a bit more. Maybe it's actually this part of the nose that comes down. I'll see as I as I move move along. Yeah, I think the nose actually, I would have ended up making it. If I would have done that, I would have made it too small. We'll see though. Yeah, because I think his nose is bigger. I gotta kind of trust my initial um drawing a little bit more. Okay, so let me let me uh go here. Like I said, I wanna try to get that generalized idea of what's happening in each of these areas let's we'll start moving along that's a good question though really really good question let me see what else you guys are saying um uh that was a long answer i know to that question but <laughs> hopefully it'll uh how do you balance the time you spend studying digitally and studying in real life uh any differences between this technique regarding studies and and um and what to work on uh yes there definitely is a difference um i think I, I like to balance it out like it's so it's it becomes much more convenient. So I've got kids now, right? So I've got I mean, I've got I've had kids for a while, but I'm saying I've got kids now in this part of my life. When I was first training, I didn't have kids and I would go out and do landscapes a lot more and stuff like that. But but to actually get the time to do all that and, and do it becomes like it's a little bit trickier. So you do what you can, right? Um and you get out there when you can and i'll grab like i've found that for doing stuff from life now um now that i'm busier and i have like a crazier schedule i found that like keeping like you know like how gurney does with like small little sketchbooks and like doing some watercolor doing some like cassane or however you say that like that like those kinds of paintings that's that's like what i have to lean on now for that stuff but um but i don't think i don't think necessarily there's a difference in approach between the digital side and the uh, traditional side, I think there's a difference in how you have to function, like how you have to proceed. But I think I'll, I'll you know, I kind of, it's interchangeable for me. It's totally interchangeable for me. And method wise, like I will end up using a lot of the same methods, um, a lot of the same methods um, with both, you know, um, they, it's sort of interchangeable for me. So, uh, and I, I, I like, digital actually it's a different medium that's all i just look at it as a different medium but but i've actually taken some things from digital and it's helped with oil painting too so like on an oil painting like a lot of times I'll ha you'll have an ellipse guide here digitally and you'll put down a circle and you can make a, a sphere like pretty you know, for all my textures and stuff that i did like i made a sphere pretty quick right i can make it pretty quick pretty easily and um and I realized I was like, I could use a guide in reality. I was like, in reality, I could use a guide and, and make the process go so much smoother. So 
Sometimes now when I'm doing an oil painting or something, I'll just grab a, uh, like a can and draw a circle with the bottom of the can or something or use an ellipse guide or whatever. And, um, and it helps immensely. So I kind of pulled that from digital and said, well, I'll give, let me give myself a guide like I have in digital. <laughs> and that helped. Um, so uh, so I, I kind of interchange it back and forth. Um, yeah, I don't, for me, the, the process is so similar and you know, it's just, it, it's just a different tool. That's it. It's just, to me, I just look at it as a different tool. So I, it's kind of interchangeable, but reality presents much more difficulty. If a person is moving, um, you know, and if they have to get back into the pose or if they, you know, like there's a, a number of factors to consider when you're drawing or painting someone or something in real life, you have to think about all that. Um, whether you have time to do that, like you have to clean up the paints, you have to have the space for it. You have to have the lighting. You have to, you know, all of that. Cause you know, I can just put my monitor up and have proper lighting on my, on my paint, so to speak, but it's a lot more difficult with oil paint and stuff. Um, but I, I think they feed off each other. I really do. A lot of people see them as opposites or whatever, but I just don't, I just, I think they feed off each other and I think they work together. And like I said, I've pulled from some and, and pulled some things from digital and thrown it into traditional and pulled some things from traditional and thrown it into digital. So, um, but I do think you need to balance your approach with that because like you should do work from life. Like a lot of people don't do work from life and it's unfortunate because when you don't do work from life, like that's your gas tank for what, if you want to understand how to make something look realistic, you know, you've got to do it from reality. I mean, it sounds funny, but it's like, you know, go to reality to see how to make something look realistic. Like imagine that, right. You know, but we just don't do it a lot of times. Like we get caught up doing what we're doing and we forget to do that and spend time doing it. So it's, you will see things differently. You'll see more color, more value. You'll see, um, like when you're, tr especially when you're trying to study color, like, man, reality is much better just so much better there's and actually that's what gives people a lot of trouble is because photos simplify things um quite a bit and when you start working from reality you start seeing that um things are there's a there's a lot more information there in reality so you have to learn to filter through that but that extra information is like i don't even know like having a higher res you know it is like having a higher res so it's it's nice when you start from there you get used to seeing it that way and you're going to want to you're going to want to uh to get more of that trust me the more you do it you'll be like i want to work from life like i'd work you know i'd work from life exclusively if i could it's just certain you know a lot of times you just can't like especially like if i'm doing a portrait commission of like a kid i'm like forget that i'm not <laughs> i'm not painting this kid from life <laughs> like they're like crying and screaming or whatever and the person's like can you paint that i'm like okay i'm gonna take a photo like that ain't, that isn't gonna happen you know i'm gonna take a photo so <laughs> so this will get carved in the background over here that's fine i know that will that that side of the drawing but good question though very very good question i think people like people should try to paint with traditional paints like it doesn't have to be oil paint although i think oil paint is great but i think people should try it because i it just it it works a different muscle than like a mental muscle than um, working digitally and you just are forced to mix the right colors and do like there's some things that it forces you to do that's kind of nice like i don't i don't think somebody that's like working for a game company or something should be using that in their work like it's too slow um for for that kind of a thing or even if you're doing like illustration commissions it's too slow like it's really hard to do it you can do it um, but you have to be very very good at it um so i wouldn't jump over to that right away i'd give yourself some time but like Greg Manchester does it, you know, of course he works traditionally and does awesome. But, um, but I think everybody should try it because it just, it forces you to think differently and people would grow immensely from it, I think. Um, and you know, as more digital sort of takes over, it's, it's going to be sort of a lost skill set, I think. But, um, now it looks like his features are a little small. I'm going to. I have to really like analyze it, but it looks like I'm making his, his, maybe his eyes are just a bit too big or whatever. I have to take a look and see, but they could just be a little bit too wide, a little bit too big. We'll see. Let me see. Like the general sort of impression is a little bit different, but that's all right. We'll get, we'll take a look and see where we end up. This is going to be darker. Oops. 
Okay. That's a little bit darker right there. Just kind of comes in like this. Let me see what else you guys are asking. All right. Um, which schoolism course uh, would this be? The way John is explaining this right now is intriguing me. Oh, okay. Um, that's uh, Essentials of Realism. If Julia didn't get that message, that's Essentials of Realism. So I break down proportion, value, edge, color, and I, not composition. It's those four things. So it's those fundamentals. And each lesson is broken down into observing those, like understand, like understanding them. And then the next part of it is manipulating them. So first one's like understanding proportion, then manipulating proportion, then understanding values and capturing them and then manipulating them and changing them. You know, that's the idea. So, and that will apply to anything you do. That'll be, you know, whether you're doing like a, uh, a, um, you know, a concept, like an illustration, whatever, you know? Oh, there it is. Julia said it. Yeah. Thank you, Julia. Um, okay. Thank you, Dan, for the recommendation, Tag and I. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Uh, when I first started out painting, I was following a video trying to do a still life and just ended up stabbing the banana out of sheer frustration in painting. I have done that. I have stabbed many of canvases and many of things. <laughs> I have definitely done that. I think his nose is bigger. I think it's bigger like on this side like it comes out on this side more and it's i think i have it over too far here yeah i think so and i think i'll end up trimming i'm gonna go underneath this and just put in some background layers real quick just like a rough background layer i'm gonna use this palette knife and kind of make it a little rough along there All right, let's see here. Just get it dark around there, which is what's happening. Like, like this is the thing, like the values won't read quite right if I don't get it, you know, if I don't get the right value outside of this. So I think like context makes a big difference. So I'm gonna put in some of that context value wise. Okay, let's see here. And it's abstract. It doesn't have to be the exact thing that I'm seeing, but it's it's abstract. But this will help it begin to make more sense. That is pointed sort of. Yeah, I think I went too far out on the back of the head. We'll see. Let's see. This is just the Kyle brush, like the palette knife brush. Loaded palette knife, I think it is. Let me see. Oops, hold on. Let's see. Palette knife one. Kyle's brush box. It's like the Kyle brush that comes with the. Uh, if you have, you know, a uh, Adobe account, it's like on the. Uh, you can get it from Photoshop. All Kyle brushes stuff. I like this brush now. There we go. And then I'll come back to this layer over top, and I can work over top of this. Let's go here. There we go. Yeah, come out like that. And this should come out to about there, but I think it should come back in a bit. Yeah, his head looks big to me in terms... Well, I mean, that arm is weird. Like, this arm is actually kind of weird, like the one that's over here. I'll probably... I, I'm, I mean, I'm probably going to cut him off, like, right there anyways, but that shoulder looks very small. But, but the other thing, too, that, like, I'm having to keep in mind the drawing, too, so where does it link up? It links up, like, underneath the lip, so way up here. That's part of the reason why it looks weird. So as soon as I start to do that, it's like, oh, okay, that, that makes more sense now. Put this in like this. Come down, and this will come in. That kind of thing. So we'll get that drawing sorted as we go along. Okay. Not as bad. And actually, when I look at the stream, it's nice. Like, there's a smaller version. I should actually do this. I should actually have this so I can see a little bit of the reference, too, because this will help me, like, seeing both small as well okay and i'll move this over uh, let's let's zoom in a bit and i'll move this over there we go like that all right so now i can grab from here and kind of carve things out and make this a little bit more specific on the side because that will change how it's perceived over there. This is probably a bit higher, actually. 
we'll see. Yeah, I think I'm making his face look a bit too small. We'll have to see where these features end up, but. And this looks a little high. Yeah, like his hair would, would do that a bit more. So I'm still thinking of the proportion, you know, but but what I'm going to do now is like is really start like I'm, I'm trying to get the colors right and everything, but I, I really want to get some of the edge work there and get this. I, I'm working from general to specific. That's the idea. The idea is to is to work in from general to specific and get this working you know before i go to put those finishing strokes down that's absolutely key and if i can get like these generalities working then i'm i'm going to be on my way let's see this is actually lighter there's something lighter in there that kind of this hair comes out like whoop, like that but again i'm looking at it very general very generally i mean yeah, in a general way. <laughs> That's what I mean. All right, so let's go here. Get this. That black came through there from the background. And you start to become deadened to the, like, the proportion side. You start to become deadened to it, too. Like, your brain looks at it for a while, and so you start to see it in, you know, a, um, a different way because you just, your brain kind of gets saturated with it. Um and you're looking at it almost too much and so you have to kind of make sure you, you have to you know stay aware like and keep like that's why i like to jump around different areas because it allows me to stay fresh in an area to um to to see it new again you know um so i can see whether i'm way off or not and i probably will take a break i'll probably take a break in a half an hour just like a five or ten minute break and the reason for that is because I'll take a break because when I come back, everything will look like I'll I'll see lots of issues. <laughs> I'll see lots of issues. Um and uh and so those issues like it helps just to take a quick break. Like you just you can figure out what's going right and wrong just by walking away and coming back. And the truth is too is I drank a whole bunch of um of water and tea and stuff and coffee and so I really have to pee. So I'll <laughs> I'll take a break then too. <laughs> For now, I'm good, though. <laughs> I'm good to go. Okay, so this eyebrow kind of comes down at that angle like that. Yeah, this is lower, I think. Yeah, it's like a bit more like that. So it's starting to work into place. Okay. We're getting there little bit by bit. General to specific, right? General to specific. So like, for instance, right around this eye, there's a, a really nice soft edge like coming out from the underside of this eye. So I'm gonna try to get the colors working for this area and the edges without diving in and saying like, I wanna put lines around this eye. I don't wanna come in, like I see so many people, like so many students I have, and I did this too when I was first starting, where you start drawing an eye like this and you start outlining everything and if you can paint what's around the eye or a feet an area that's a feature if you can paint what's around it and nail what's around it um that will uh that will sort of make the eye come to life on its own it's like if i dive back up into this the eye will sort of i won't need to worry about really painting that eye i'm just painting what's around the eye and the eye starts to appear out of that right so but it, it's it's a tricky thing, but you just have to, you, you can't, you can't stay too focused. Like, and you can't, um, you can't, uh, dive in and start putting lines around all the features. It'll kill things right away. Get that general impression. Okay. Let's get this a little bit softer in here. And I'm not, you know, likeness is not, I'm not doing this to show you guys the likeness too. So I'm not going to obsess about it. Like if it's a little bit off for Sam, I don't care, you know? Um, I'm not, this is not, I'm not doing this painting so that it looks exact. It's not a portrait commission or something. I'm not trying to make it exactly like him. Um, like it's not that I don't want to do it, but it's just, if it's not there, it takes a lot of work to get to that point. So it's, I'm not, I'm not worried about it if it's not exact. 
Um, because I have I want the I want you guys to understand the principles of what I'm doing. So this angle is a bit different. Gets a little bit closer to the mouth like that. And this underneath here is quite a bit different. So this would carve this out a bit more. Uh, this would be higher, I think, up on that lip. Like that. This would come up a little bit higher. And again, I'm I'm keeping it general. This would be cut in, I think, a bit further back. Um, and let's make this a little darker right here. Like that. This is definitely more pink here. So look, here's an example of that color idea, right? So I know it needs to be a lighter value. It's like, boom, it needs to be more pink. So I'm just putting in a stroke like that, right? That's the idea there. I'm not, I'm not um, committing to that exact color, but I'm just taking a cue from that color and, and building it, uh, building it into there, into that area. So let's see, this comes in like this. That would come up a bit. This would actually come up. This is actually a bit darker and more desaturated as it comes up here too. This gets a bit lighter. All generalities at this point. Okay. And you can see it's like a slow progression of proper choices. And so it's a slow progression of proper choices, but I'm not even putting the finishing strokes on here yet. I'm not even worried about that yet. Um, that's not going to come till later. I'm getting the generalities in place. And then once that happens, then I'll put the finishing strokes. Then I'll do some things in one, two, three strokes over top of what I've got here. And this is the trick to getting something to look you know, sort of Sergeant-esque is like a lot of times he would create the cr the proper transitions. Like, let's say we're doing the nose, right? And he would work up this nose until, you know, like the general, and I, I read um, on, on Craig Mullen's site, he used to have like this, uh, this, you know, first person, this first person was, they were giving a first person, sorry, first person perspective on Sergeant painting a portrait. They were talking about what he did and they were observing him and they took notes and everything and they, they wrote about it. So they didn't, didn't take pictures, but they wrote about it. And, you know, everything that it was very helpful for me to read that, like it, he described, it described his process and how he worked from general to specific like this. And that's why a lot of the time you'll see on like the noses that Sergeant does, this is all the same. That whole side is all the same. And then he'll just put a highlight right there because he's working very generally um, in general, you know, in general, he would just, he would just be kind of putting the forms down and then he would we would commit sorry you can tell i'm getting getting into the art side of my brain i'm like <laughs> the speaking is suffering <laughs> the the speech side is is taking a hit um okay steven what's up uh what's a good surface to use to start to learn oils definitely um, anything that is primed significantly like like make sure it's primed enough where it's not absorbent these like like a smoother weave and something that is prime even if you're using cotton make sure it's like triple prime absorbent and thick like ragged canvas sucks to paint on it's awful it's all it's so bad so um if you can avoid that then that'll be really good because that like there's a lot of surfaces you can paint on this ear is lower actually. It's yeah, it's lower. This ear actually should be like down here. Um there's a lot of surfaces you can paint on. And you know, but but most of them are crappy. Like if you just go to like the the you know, like I don't know, like uh art store that's near you, they'll probably have thick weave like not like abs a really absorbent canvases and it's just it's such a bear to paint on those like and they don't tell you so you get it and you think like, man, this is this is really hard. Like oil painting is hard, but it's really because the canvas is crappy. So um, I, that's the one thing above paint, above anything. That's the one thing that I would say you want to spend your money on if your oil painting is like on the canvas, like brushes, paint. I feel like you can get by with cheap crap like with those. But if you're if you have cheap canvas, it's kind of it's nasty to work on student grade paints. It's like they're not great, but they're fine, you know, but student grade um Student grade uh, canvas is just so awful to work on. Like it's awful. So 
yeah i that's i think that surface needs to be you can you can make it yourself you can you know you could do it yourself but you know it's kind of hard sometimes it, it'll be too smooth or too ragged or too i don't know i like i like to let other people who are better at it do it you know <laughs> that's a good question though i should do some oil painting stuff would you guys like to see that on schoolism like an oil painting introduction class like introduction to oil painting like just to get people started like a gorilla style get people started on it um, i'd be curious if there'd be a i know there's other there are there are other other things that other classes that talk about that but mine would be like a real it would definitely be a focus on like getting in there and like getting it done quickly you know so um let me know greg manchester is a beast absolutely so kelly hopefully that that helps um Hey, Art of Lee, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. That's nice. Yeah, it's it's a blast to do this. It's an absolute blast. And don't forget, everybody, if you're just... Oh, you can paint along with me, too. I mean, you can see that up there in the stream. But if anybody's painting along with me, just go to that... that um, I forgot to mention that. Sorry, that link up there. It's uh, just jonathanhardesty.com slash reference. And you can see, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the reference that I'm working from here. I'd love to see what you guys come up with, too. Um, I'm sure you'll do better than me, you know, grab the reference and work on it and, and, you know, see what you can, uh, what you can do, or you can paint right along with me. Um, even if somebody's looking at this video after the fact, you know, you'll be able to, to paint along with me. I'll keep that reference up there. Anytime I have reference, um, I'll, I'll put it up there. So anytime I do a live stream and stuff from this point on, I'm just going to use that page for that. So I've also got a, um, a video coming up, uh, uh, it's an unboxing of my Sense Labs uh, stuff, the stuff that they sent me. I did an unboxing with a guy, uh, a kid in my neighborhood. He's a friend of my son, Sam. This this son right here that I'm painting, he's a friend of his, and he's really into art. And so he's been coming over, and he's been, like, getting help. He, he bought an iPad, and he's only, uh, I think he's 12. And, you know, he's he's really getting into it, like, really getting into it. And he's working on with Infinite Painter and Procreate and all that stuff. Um, and, uh, and so he does that, uh, unboxing with me. You guys can see that. Cause I'm, I'm loving this stuff. They sent me this and I, I had so many issues with Wacom that, uh, that man, I just, I, they were like a heaven, heaven sent, uh, thing, you know, like when the package came, I was like, yes. And it lived up to what I wanted it to be. So it was really, really, really good. And it's not expensive for what you get. So it's definitely cheaper than Wacom. Wecom just doesn't. They phoned it in. They don't care anymore. It's obvious. But um, but anyways, I got that coming out. Oh, but um, so yeah, you can paint along with me. Um, this video will be up on YouTube. The other videos, um, the other uh, video of the monster that I did will be up there as well. Um, uh, and you guys, I'm going to be providing more stuff on YouTube too. Um, uh, what else? Oh, I wanted to let you guys know too. If you guys have subscribed to me on here, um, if you subscribe to me, everybody at the end of this uh at the end of this uh session so in an hour like kind of an hour and a half from now i'm gonna i'm gonna spin the wheel for everybody that's a a, a subscriber and you're gonna have a chance to win one of these prizes <laughs> and i am gonna be giving away a painting today maybe one or two i have some i was telling everybody i have some when i moved to texas i found that i had some in storage and things and things that i that i i um I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with them because some of them are like just composition studies and some of them are, you know, they're not like paintings that I can sell in a gallery and things like that. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to give away these paintings for anybody that wants them. So, um, so you don't, I won't tell you what you're going to get. I'll surprise you, but, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to give everybody a shot. That's uh, that's subscribed at the end of today. Um, and I think it's like right now, I think there's like four or five people or something like that. Cause it's been a while since I've streamed on Twitch, but everybody that has, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little giveaway. So if you want to, if you subscribe, you could get a get a painting. And I want to do this once a month too. I want to do this once a month. I want to um, I want to just pick some of the subscribers and 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 give some free stuff out. So I got some. I got a bunch of stuff planned too, like like projects that I'm working on that I'm excited to let you guys know about. But there's gonna be some fun things. It's gonna be some fun things. So I've got a lot like sort of in the pipeline. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Oh, you'd sign up for a class on oils. Nice. Okay, good. Good. Like, and I think, what would you guys want it to be centered around? Like, 
for me, I would I think I would want the class to not be centered around necessarily a subject matter per se, but like being familiar with the medium. Like that's what I would focus on. Do you guys agree with that? Like, do you think that's right or good or? Because I think that's what I would tend to want to get across to people is because I think that's what people have. Like they just feel intimidated to paint, to actually paint. You know, they just feel intimidated. And so I would like to remove that intimidation and let people have that as an option, you know? So I think I would focus on like really, really um, uh, simple setups and really, you know, like maybe like limited palette stuff and just like, you know, I don't know, something like that. Like, I, I does that sound good? Like you guys, like, does that sound like pretty cool? Or, you know, what do you think? Um, okay. Okay, let's see. That's a lot of prizes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some there's some dubious ones in there too, though. So the prizes that you could win, you know, uh, an, an improvised song about you, which I will do right now. Like at the end of the stream, I will do that. <laughs> so there's there's a there's a bunch that are are sort of, <laughs> you know, and and you know, I'm. I'm gonna give if nobody if when we go through it like all the subscribers I'll go back through if somebody doesn't win the painting I'll go back through you know um, so Alwick good to good to see you in here um, okay yes so the right here it up up top so it's just JonathanHardesty.com slash reference to get the reference uh, yes so right there yeah okay yes there it is yep. I'm actually glad to hear you say that you couldn't see it because I didn't want it to be too um, distracting up there. So it's kind of good that it that it wasn't distracting you. So um, so you can see like this eye. I'm not obsessing about it. I'm I put in a little bit of something, but I'm not gonna go crazy. And I do want to kind of like maybe carve out the side here a little bit, and I will work into that, but. General to specific. That's the goal here. Okay. Let's go here. Okay, right here. Let's get some of this. And then I do have a little bit more light here. And I think this should be a part of, and, and I have this green here, so I kind of want to stick with this green that's there. Go a little bit lighter. Because so I put that in and was using that as an example, so I want to kind of I'll mix it with a little bit more of the skin tone, but I do want it to be in there somewhat. Um, let's go like 20% opacity. A lot of times, the way I make transitions is by dropping the opacity. So I'll drop the opacity down to make those transitions. Um, and that is a, it's a great way to, to make soft edges. You can take a rougher brush and make soft edges. And the accumulation of strokes that happens when you do that is very similar to how oil painting works for me. Like it's, you gotta go like, if you're making a, an edge, you have to go like stroke, 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 and line them up like that. And with a lower opacity, it tends to work the way it does with oil painting, which is great. Um, so let's go a little bit lighter. That tends to be the way I do a lot of, a lot of transitions. Okay. And I would encourage you guys to really, when you're trying to learn the methodology for all this, don't worry about the likeness. It's very hard to like to get yourself to ignore it sometimes, especially if you know the person. I've painted Sam like a lot, so I don't I don't feel the urge to like, you know, I don't I don't feel the urge to like nail his portrait every time now. But, but when I was first starting out, I did. I was like, oh, man, I want to get this right. And I want to, you know, um, you know, so but really avoid that because it it it, it robs you of the process like because then you start focusing on on correcting and moving and moving and moving things and moving things and moving things and then you're just adjusting 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 as opposed to thinking about the way that you're proceeding and how you want to how you want to move forward and stuff like it's you just want to be careful um it can kill things it can kill your kill some interesting strokes too like you want to make interesting strokes and it can kill those interesting strokes sometimes I'm going to take some liberties and kind of make this silhouette like the hair is coming over a bit more. It seems to make more sense to me that way than it's weird. The photo has like a really almost like a hard edge over there. That doesn't really make much sense to me. So I'm going to take some liberties and change it. 
let's see this this actually gets more more reddish and a little bit lighter as it gets further down here so one of the things like the generalities that i need to fix is this side of this cheek going from lighter to darker as it goes over there so i want to try to capture that it's a little bit lighter right there yeah like that sort of thing like that reflected light kind of transitions there same thing it goes up into the nose right here and transitions this comes down here like that. Let's make this a little bit rougher. I'm going to probably make a, like a sort of a vignette down here. So I'll make this a little bit rougher. I want to make this a little bit more broken up. I've found like putting a hard edge like this on something. Er, like just ending it like that. It makes the viewer feel like you um, like there's nothing else outside the frame. So when you do put a hard edge on the bottom like that and you don't like create a, a vignette, like you don't have it like kind of tapering off or anything, it makes the viewers like, it's like a claustrophobic feel with the with the painting. It makes, like I said, it makes the viewer feel like, oh, there's nothing outside the frame. Like everything that I'm seeing is all that's there, you know? So I found like, don't just cut it off at the bottom. It's just like a general random thing I know, but, but something to keep in mind. This will come in a bit, I think. In a bit more. Yes, it will. This will carve back. I think the chin is too low as well. That's better. Um, yeah, and see like the mouth and the nose, they're not exactly right, but it's like, whatever. I'm not gonna, it can look like his cousin, you know? I'm more concerned about the, the approach. I want to show you guys those finishing strokes. See how I have done no highlights. I did a little bit of it here, but it's more about the, the form there. And see, this area actually needs to have a little bit more reflected light. So this is where I'm adjusting the form before I'm focusing on the features and kind of coming in and saying, okay, well, actually the values are a little bit closer here. That's why it ends up looking a little bit flatter there. Um, I'm focusing on those things first. Not coming in and putting in highlights and finishing things off. Those last magical strokes that come, they come later. They come later and they're towards the end. And I always avoid drawing the eyes for as long as possible. Like I always like paint what's around the eyes instead of, instead of you know, painting the eyes themselves. I'll paint like the stuff that's around there. And this is not what I want to do. This is the exact opposite of what I said I was, should be doing. Should be keeping this very general. And this is this I'm going to get back to being. It actually looks much more like if you squint down and look at this, it actually looks kind of more like that. To be honest, I'm, you know, that's that's the overall impression that I'm getting. It's more like that. This side even has some reflected light in there too, and kind of just like it hints at the inside of the eye like that or whatever. Okay. This is lighter around this shape. And it does get kind of peachy as it comes out here. So I'm gonna in intensify that right here. That's a little too orange. Okay. okay let's see here there's some shadows underneath here i want to get like the big forms of the hair and this kind of this is more like golden up here kind of comes off there like that so see i'm start i'm painting this hair by keeping it very general too and just looking at what the overall colors and values are doing and see how this gets it stays light up into there painting the masses first basically is what i mean let's see i want to see and make sure that i'm still okay good didn't want the uh the music to start treading into um um uh, you know, uh, demonetization <laughs> territory, not demonetizing, but they actually, 
on Twitch, they just actually like mute your whole. Like when people look back at the stream, they just mute it if that music's playing. Mute the whole thing. Which is crazy. Okay, so this would. Yeah, this this whole section actually reads much closer in value to me. It's interesting, and I do see a little bit of the darks, but they're they don't occur till like. Stuff like that. I like to look at it more abstractly at first. Okay. All right. Um, let's see what you guys are saying. Okay. Uh, I have to head out a bit early. Oh, good. Good, then months of flailing around. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. That's what I like to hear. I like to save you guys time and effort. And, I mean, that's that's awesome to me. If I can help move you forward, like, I understand the extreme frustration of being an artist, like, where you're constantly feeling like you're looking at a wall and you can't get past it. And it's very tough. If I can help you guys figure, pro figure out stuff, problem solve, you know, that's huge. That's huge. And um, I'm really happy about that. Really happy about that if I can do that. This ear is, is in the wrong place, I think. So let's go there and then cut it. Paste. I might need to actually take this layer too. Uh, let's see. Let's go there and let me, let me do this. Oops, dang it. I think it needs to be much closer in. I'm looking. Yeah, I think it does need to be lower like that, but I think it's much closer. Yeah, I made his head a little a little too big, I think, or something. I'll have to adjust that. I'll work on the eyes later, but I think that definitely is. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. I think there's multiple things that are going on. Okay, let's let's keep it here or actually right let's keep it like right there it's going to go in between i think that'll help okay that's better i think and then what i'll do is fill this in and i think this yeah like the neck angle is needs to be a little bit different it kind of comes to a point there and this kind of comes in like that this out like that that's better i think okay we'll bring this in and kind of do that i think that's a little better for his actual head not 100 percent, but better yeah okay so let's go to a bit of a higher opacity. Let's let's kind of let's let's kind of create some. Now I think we have most areas like generally. There's a lot of different colors on this, and a lot that's showing up here. I'm just going to kind of create some transitions, so that when we go to put some strokes over top of this, we'll have a good uh, rendering base to work from. sort of thing and see a lot of it like I, I said I was working general to specific then you look at a lot of it and you're like you, you probably doesn't need to do much there right you're probably looking at certain things saying well he doesn't need to change that or he doesn't need to change that and that's the nice thing when you can leave those areas that's when it's just fantastic these lips actually touch on this side and those edges this is much smaller too this is brighter If you can leave an area alone and not really mess with it after you, you know, when you're moving from general to specific, that's, that's ideal. That means you've, you've been accurate even in the, uh, even in the simple stage. 
Okay. I think the shadow should be a little bit more clear, but over here it's pretty soft. Whoops. This is definitely much softer here. And these colors need to be warmed up a bit. It's a little cool. It's kind of like, it looks like a black eye in here a little bit. Let's adjust those a little bit. And I think they're a little bit lighter as well. Definitely very pinkish in here. Okay. All right, guys, I will be right back and we will continue. I'll probably just take like five minutes. And I'll be right back. Like I said, I drank all that tea. I've definitely got a pee. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, you don't want me peeing in my chair on the stream, you know. <laughs> so we'll come back and then I'll have a much, I'll probably have a much fresher, um, you know, eye and be able to kind of make, you know, some drawing changes. And then we'll, then we'll move towards the finish and I'll show you guys kind of how I do that. So. Um, and I will answer your questions. You can keep asking questions. I'll be right back. So just give me a sec.
All right, I'm back. And yes, I do see issues. I definitely see issues. Let me show you. Um, uh, I think I could probably... So it, it, the head looks elongated. Like it looks elongated. Um, it might be too... I might need to carve it out actually at the top. Like there's some elongation that's happening here. Like at the top, like that looked too thick to me. Um, and I think the chin and like... What I, what I tend to want to do is kind of just do this. Like, I think, I think I can kind of just grab all this. We'll see how this works, but let's, let's make this all, let's make it all one layer now. We don't have to worry about this. I don't need to separate the layers. I, I think if I were to like distort this up, I think it will, yeah, like his head is much more like this. Like it's much more squeezed like that. Um. And the eyes, I think, are actually... I, I My initial way of, of doing them was actually right. I think they were a little bit... Um, they're, like, they're, they're a little bit bigger. And I think that's closer. Um, let's see. But it looks like I might even need to kind of do this. This is where, this is where like, man, you know, digital is like... Excels at this, right? So let's do this. And then let's distort it. And we can distort it and kind of, yeah, I think, actually, I'll, I'll warp it. Let's warp it. And this is where if I was doing a, um, if I was doing a, an oil painting, I would have to really, um, you know, lock it. I would spend way longer locking in the drawing. Um, but. But, you know, that's better. Like, that's not going to look 100% like I'm not. That's okay. But it's better because there was something that was just bugging me about the head. Like, like just making it look human-like. I mean, not necessarily look like Sam, but just look human-like. It was bugging me. <laughs> so, all right. So, let's get rolling again. Let's keep going. Okay. So, all these different little value changes. All this stuff that comes in. I've got to capture all this. See this green underneath this jaw? That green that's happening there? I'm capturing that, right? Then this orange, it's more of a like a reddish kind of peachy orange. Uh, like that kind of comes in. It's actually pretty red overall, but um, this too, let's see right here. Like this, this lip sort of flows into, you can see like the values, it kind of comes to the edge like this and kind of flows into that area. So I'm thinking about that and trying to capture that right there form wise, like get that section to look more like that. This is not a hard edge on the edge of this lip. Like I, I made it like a crisp edge. It's not a crisp edge. It's actually softer because it kind of rolls over. And there's probably some reflected light in there. Yeah, this this kind of creeps over a bit onto the upper lip. That's much better already. Um, this neck is a very soft edge down here. Coming down here, this neck is a very soft edge. It kind of a little bit later right there and then this is this trails off and this actually this orange and reddish area kind of oops kind of creeps in there like this like that this song is cool i like this one it's like yuri <laughs> okay let's bring this up a little bit to define underneath that chin. That's a really great um, area right there. Like 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 using that orange up against the shadow of the chin to define that chin area. It's really nice. It's like you can have a dark silhouette right that like that, and then this light area underneath really pushes that chin forward. Always look for opportunities like that when you're doing a portrait. Like look for an opportunity where you can have like a a dark silhouette over a light and a light silhouette over the dark and and kind of can kind of mix those things back and forth notice how i have not put the highlights on the eyes yet you know haven't done that haven't done any of that stuff yet we don't need to that's why don't don't rush to that stuff that's not what's going to make it look good it's important that you understand that i'm gonna i'm gonna is this music too loud or is it okay you guys think okay let's see um uh John, on your oil painting video, it would be awesome to show how you mix the colors on your palette and how you keep track of all the colors and tones as the palette gets more full. Ah, yes. That's a good idea. 
I'm going to turn this down a little bit. You guys can let me know. I think that's pretty good, but it, it got it got pumped up. The, uh... <laughs> but yeah, keeping track of all that um, is there's a lot of different ways to do it, but keeping track of all that is is a key thing. Um, it's definitely a key thing, and having having some organization, I would say, like on your palette, that's the big thing. Like a lot of people just don't have organization on their palette, and it's very easy for things to get out of control and for things to get all messed up. So you just have to. You have to um, really, you have to pay, pay attention and you have to have an organized thought process, but also an organized palette. So I'm gonna make the eye a little bit bigger, I think. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. My son's got my wife's eyes and like, they're almost like cartoony big. Go. Let's put some pinkish stuff out here. A little bit darker value. There we go. This is looking better. And I need this nice soft transition flowing into this part of the eye right here. Like that socket. I need that. I need that area. I need it. I did do a workshop on uh, portraiture recently at uh, at schools, and that was really fun. Um, I'd like to do that again sometime. I think that was really that was a real blast. I had a lot of people in that, and it was it was. I think a lot of people learned a lot from it. It was great. I had fun too. Hope they do more workshops like that. I mean, obviously, with with Lightbox, you guys have your fill of workshops right now. You have so many good ones. I appreciate you guys being here, actually. You know, there's a lot of people to look at on Lightbox and everything, and I appreciate you guys being here being here with me and, and uh, you know, uh, like uh, sticking in here with me on this portrait. I, I appreciate it. I don't take it lightly, so thank you guys. I've got, I've got so many heroes there it's at Lightbox um, and at Schoolism and at Lightbox that, that I look up to too. And I, I've been jumping in their, uh, their sessions too. I can't wait to look at them all afterwards. I've been real busy with Lightbox like uh, doing my stuff, but I'm looking forward to going back in later and being able to, to catch all those sessions. And next year, I think we have pretty much have confirmation that we're, we're going to be doing it in person again if we can you know unless something comes up but i think they're planning on it next year in person so yes we can finally like see each other again <laughs> i did that first light box and then you know and then we didn't have another one i was like oh man like the digital side the digital side is good it's great that we can do this i think it's awesome but but i do miss the uh seeing everybody's booths in person and walking around and meeting everybody and that's that so that's so fun I love that hanging out and you know you come down in the morning and you somebody's got a painting out there and you're like seeing in the lobby they're talking about it everybody it's like this is the best you know <laughs> I had a uh, an uber and Coro you know Justin Kaufman like El Coro if you guys know him he uh he brought one of his paintings in and I was like I canceled my uber I had to like pay money to cancel it and I was like no I'm not missing this uh this painting he had his painting out there I was like I, I ran out to the dude. I was like, hey, sorry, I can't, you know, go. I said, so I gave him a tip and canceled it and um, and uh, went back in and, <laughs> and, and uh, saw the painting and it was totally worth it. So I missed that, missed that kind of thing. That's the thing too, like someone like Greg Manchess, like you got to see his stuff in person. Like it's all oil paintings and stuff. You got to see it in person really for it to have its impact, you know? But I miss that. I miss that. So hopefully everything's at least doable for next year. You know, I hope so. We'll see. Till then, I'm going to be on Twitch. I'm going to be streaming when I can. I'm going to be doing stuff when I can. So we can keep keep the interaction rolling. 
I want to get a programming guide too, like for what I'm doing on Twitch. Like I want to let you guys know, like I want to go month to month and let you guys know what's coming in the month. So it'll be like, hey, monster painting on this day. And I want to do some magma stuff with you guys too. So like I'm definitely going to do that with people that are subscribed on there. I'm going to do some magma stuff with them. Like we we're going to do some drawings together. That'd be really fun. I want definitely I want to have like a regular schedule of that. That would be a blast because I, I just I did one of the drawing jams, you know, um, recently and I posted up on my Instagram. If you guys want to see the actually, I'll show you here. I'll show you the image um, and I'll show you what I painted on there here. Let me show you. OK. Let's see. Um, let me find it. But we'll definitely do some of those. Yeah, so check this out. So here's the drawing jam. Um, here's the first image. And actually, I'll, I'll open them up in Photoshop so I can put them together. Because I, I posted it up on Instagram, so I have them like kind of separate. There's the first one. And here, I'll take this off. So you guys can see. And then I'll do the next one and put it over top. This was a blast to do, though. open this with Photoshop you guys can, can probably spot the stuff that I did there we go take a look at that so this was really fun I'll zoom in on some of the stuff that we did this was awesome I can't remember the name of the artist I'm trying to remember I tried to go back and see who was in there because I didn't know anybody really. Like I, I met them here when we did this, but I love this whole scene that he's got going on back here. He was, um, I remember he came in later, but I, I have to ask his name, but um, but I want to draw with everybody again. Bobby did this one up here and he did, I think he did this dragon up there too. So I did this guy here, like in the river that, that uh, you know, um, uh, that it's like sea monster. I also did this dude over here. So, Somebody had drawn this like really cute girl and I was like, okay. So I drew this dude over there and uh, and gave her, I was I was on the layer below her layer. So I had to put the knife below, but it's like the knife there. <laughs> you guys always know I have to, oh, somebody drew this. I didn't see that. That's, that's really creepy. I did this tree face here. I did this little green guy here. I tried to make it fit in. I did this dude over here too. And this guy, this pink guy right here that's sitting there, you know, fishing next to the other one so it's fun fun stuff <laughs> i had a blast doing this but we got to do some of these we got to do some of these together and uh and i would love to do that and we'll post them up on on youtube and you know, it'll be really fun we, we totally got to do that have a blast magma's like changing the game and stuff like that hey what's up cherry kaboom what's up Good to see you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that that helped. I'm glad that that helped. Yeah, that was that was um that was fun. That was really fun. If you guys didn't see, I'll show you that um I'll show you that uh, that texture one. So I did like a textural monster, and uh, it was really fun. I'm starting now to use those. I'm I'm using the textures now to be able to do stuff. So now that I've finished my 500 and I feel pretty good about the knowledge I've gained, you know, now I'm starting to be able to kind of apply it and have some fun with it. And so I have a lot to learn in terms of monster creature design and things like that. But um, but I'm having fun, you, you know, exploring that and heading down that route. So here's the um, yeah, here it is. So this was the textural monster. So people were kind of giving me feedback along the way. And so I did the sketch of this monster guy, and then, um, and then we did, uh, we put like pus-filled sacks on his head, and then had like this gross stuff on his shoulder, and you can kind of see what direction we were heading in. <laughs> that was fun. That was a really fun one. I want to finish this one. I want to finish this one completely, and you know, make it look fully rendered and stuff. So I'm excited about that. But, um, but this was a this was a really fun one to do. So. Yeah, you just, I just had those textures off to the side and was doing that. So that, that was a blast. I want I definitely want to make that a part of the stream, too. I want to make portraits a part of the stream. I want to do a portrait, all, like, a, like a lot, because I just love portraits. And, um, and then also, I want to 
make uh, doing monsters and stuff like that a part of the stream too. That'd be really fun. So. Okay. Okay, so let's grab this brush. And actually the bottom of this hair, like right here is actually kind of rough and sort of like that, a little bit lighter maybe. Sort of does that, yeah. Like that kind of thing. I need to get the form rendered over here. And again, remember I was saying, you know, just creeping up on it, like it's, I'm building it up like, like I have a sandblasted version of this. Like I was telling you, like this is, I'm worried about rendering the big forms. I'm not like overly hardening the edges. I'm not trying to commit to the exact placement of everything. I'm not trying, you know, I'm, I'm working from general to specific and working from general to specific is always going to yield nice, controllable, good results. And and you have opportunity there, like when you're doing that, you have opportunity to create some interesting strokes and stuff. It's not that you lose the opportunity there, but I wait for those finishing strokes to the last bit, you know? So it's actually funny, cause like, I'll, like this is the way I'll oil paint too. And I have friends that like will wanna come over and watch. And the majority of this painting process is me adjusting things. And it's even, you know, it's even more so in oils is like, it just takes a while to get to the finishing section and and so they'll come and watch and they think it's going to be like this exciting thing where i'm like slapping paint on there and like you know you know running at the canvas and doing it. and then they're like oh this is actually really boring <laughs> so i always tell everybody i'm like if you want to come watch me paint i'm like it's actually kind of boring unless you paint if you paint then you'll like it but if you don't you'll find it you know so they kind of fall asleep a little bit and then they're like wait what happened they come back and they're like what happened it looks good now <laughs> later <laughs> And it's actually that for that reason I I when I would do portrait commissions and stuff like that I would never show some like somebody mid process. I rarely would show them mid process what was going on because they like everybody thinks like when they get that commission everybody thinks they oh it's fine I know it's mid process and but they get everybody gets worried regardless. They look at it and they're like he's not going to leave it like that is. It was always that that sort of conversation so I was like I just stopped stopped letting people see too much in mid process. <laughs> So I'd let them see like the very beginning and then, you know, I, it would be like towards the end. So let's carve this back. Okay, let's start giving some love to the, the neck and the shirt area. This is gray too along this. Okay. And then this will be carved out a bit more back here. I want to, I really want to pay attention to the angles here. Like, like you'd be surprised the shoulders make a massive difference in how the neck looks and how the head is looks. It, it, it will change it from looking like it's like a bobble head to looking like it's grounded and working. And it's amazing how just the shoulder angle and the neck and stuff, how much of a role they play in a portrait. Like it really does play an important role. So Let's go here and grab this. go like this getting the big form to work here okay. Some 
a bit darker here too. Go a bit lighter. Okay. See how I've avoided the eyes for as long as I could? Absolutely avoided them for as long as I could. Not gotten sucked in. And they could, they use, they need correction and they need things like, but I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding them on purpose, you know. Um, just staying away for as long as possible. Painting what's around them instead of painting them. That's a little better. And I think this kind of comes back up into here a little bit more, which would make this different. And this is a very pretty soft transition coming in here, like this section. And his expression there, it's it, there's a lot that. Um, you know, the expression relies on this stuff being in the in the right place this being on the area up here it's important too okay. oops that's way too high but we'll get there okay let's see what you guys are saying all right um this playlist is banging nice that's awesome i love it this is harris heller he made like because you everybody would get flagged on twitch all the time and um and so he made this whole like you know that's what he started off as a musician then he did like twitch stuff and things like that and then he made a whole thing on on um on uh, uh spotify like it's a whole like it's free like you won't get flagged for anything and stuff like that you won't get flagged for any of that and uh, it's great it's a it's a good uh i like them i like the songs a lot and they're just real simple they don't have lyrics which is great and um yeah this one is called let's see what this one's called this is uh, lucky. Well, that this one's Lucky Stars, but I don't know what the other one was that was just played before this. But let's go back and see. It was called Wrap It Up. So, fun stuff. Yeah, fun, yeah. I like his. I like his stuff. It, it's it's great. Because before, remember, I couldn't have music. Because every time I did, it would just like on the recording, it would silence everything, which is always so lame. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying. Um. Of course, lots of really amazing artists, and you are one of them. Oh, well, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get there, to be honest with you. Um, it's a long journey, you know? Like, there's always stuff to learn, always ways to grow, and it's it's tough. I mean, it is very tough. Like, it's, like, you know, I've been kind of heading into that territory, you know, I was saying, like, the imaginative side of things and building up my skill set there. And, and, you know, just, just doing that, like, gives you such an appreciation for people that do it. If you ever try to draw a comic, like, you just have so much appreciation for the people that draw comics. Like, when you try something that you haven't tried before, it's just, you realize how hard it really is. Like, it's just so difficult. And, and um, you know, I've been learning, I've been learning a lot lately. And, and, uh, um, and it just gives me even more appreciation for, you know, the guys that are doing that kind of work. And, and it's really cool. So, I'm working on it. I'll, I, you know, I'm, I'm building myself up. I'll be one of them. You know, I, I have a, I have a skill set that's a little bit more unique, I think, in this side of the, this side, like in, in, you know, in the game industry and stuff like that. There's not as many people who have studied classically and stuff, so it gives me a little bit more of a, a unique sort of take on it, on like how I render or how I, you know, just approach things or whatever. And um, so I, you know, it's, it's been nice, like, kind of painting like this like like even just looking at this like eventually i'm going to be applying this to all like illustrations characters all this stuff it's going to be it's going to be fun and i'm already starting to do that a little bit but it's 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 uh step by step you know becoming much more uh much closer so i'm loving it 
So I'm learning right along with you guys. I mean, I really am. Like, I'm learning all this stuff. Like, I did those 500 textures. If you guys have ever seen my 500 textures, I've finished them recently. Um, and uh, that was one of the steps in the process to get me a knowledge about um, how each materials work, how each surface works, and what the... And that's this sort of spawned that class on Schoolism. And when I finished the 500th one, the nice thing was this one, this self-portrait that I did of like a textural self-portrait. This one that I did, like I didn't really have to use reference hardly at all. Um, a little bit, but not much. And that showed me that I'd sort of internalized a lot of a lot of it because um, I was able to just kind of move forward with it and and do it without having to think about it too much. I can render it. So, um, but this was like that, uh, you know, that first step in that direction and. I didn't expect it to turn into a class on schools and things like that, but it but it was a really good step in the direction of learning how things work, how the surfaces work, how to internalize that info. And I'm moving on to like anatomy and construction. I'm going to be doing some work in ZBrush and doing like an ecorche in ZBrush and doing a bunch of things. And you know, I'm gonna have, I have other challenges for myself, like a thousand hands and and you know a thousand feet and you know like like learning all that and getting my drawing chops up like from imagination where they need to be construction wise. Um, you know, because I've done a ton of figure drawing and stuff, but it's different doing figure drawing with that mentality and with the uh, construction mentality. It's a lot different. So, um, so I'm going to be able to eventually put it all together and I can see elements of that. Like when I like that, that monster, that textural monster, you know, I can start to see elements of where I would head with it and what I would do. And, and so fun stuff, fun stuff. I'm having a blast learning, that's for sure. Never going to stop. That is for sure. That much I know. I'm never going to stop. There's too much to learn. It's like, I, there's some quote I saw the other day, and it said, um, it was, I think it was about baseball or something. It said, it's amazing how, you know, the the more I learn about baseball, like the more I realize I don't know anything about baseball or something like that, you know. And, and it's the same thing with everything. It's the same thing with art. It's You know, when you start getting into it, you're like, man. There's too much to learn. Like it's just, it'll last your lifetime, which is the fun part. Like I can't imagine being at a job where I just felt like, you know, I mean, I can't imagine because I was there, but but I, I'm glad I'm not at, at a job where I just, I feel like I can't grow, you know? Um, I can't get better or do anything better or grow and and try new things and Art is great for that. Every painting's new. Everything's a different challenge. It's a little bit different, or you have a little bit of a different slant on it, or, you know. Sorry for that. My allergies here in Texas. Um, I'm struggling so much on painting portraits, not drawing, but painting. What would your advice to be um, careful on portraits? So, so block it in based on the lights and the darks first. That would be my initial advice. Um, a lot of times people, when they're struggling and they're drawing fine, then usually like the line, the lines um, that they're putting down are pretty good. But then when they start working based on values, like areas of value, it starts to become an issue. Um, I would, I would say, make sure that you're keeping the shapes of light and dark in the right place and focus on those. Um, so I could draw a portrait like this. I could draw a portrait like this and come over here and, and, you know, like, take the face and, and draw lines and make the eyes like like this or whatever and have the eyes and then draw the nose and kind of outline everything and stuff you know whatever but if you instead if you're looking at it more like this it's going to be a little bit easier for you to get things under control like if you're looking at it based on the light right like if you're doing this that's going to be easier and then you know, it doesn't really matter whether you're putting lines in to fill that in like a drawing or whether you're just taking a paintbrush and doing that. All the principles are exactly the same. It's like keeping those values and those shapes of light and dark in the right place. Um, and so it's, uh, but you know, of course it's easy to say that, you know, it's easy to say that because I mean, portraits are hard. They're very, very demanding. And the thing about portraits is like, if you get one thing wrong, it looks bad. It looks off. You know, and so if, if you get one thing messed up, it just looks awful a lot of times. So it's it's very, very tricky. And and when you're using a medium that you're not as comfortable with, it's easy to get that thing wrong. It's and I think I think the one thing I would tell you, too, is is 
make sure that even though you're using a medium that you feel uncomfortable with, that you're focusing on the fundamentals. Like it's it's gotta you've gotta be focusing on edge, value, you know, um, proportion, color. You gotta be focusing on those things rather than focusing on the actual strokes that you're putting down at first, especially. And that will help you. Like if you're always thinking about the value, always thinking about the proportion, all that stuff, you'll you'll find you have a much better time. Um, and you won't get tripped up by the paint because paint can really trip you up for that reason. It can really trip you up. Like it just makes you focus on the wrong things and makes you like, I don't even know. It's like you realize you're heading down a path that you didn't want to head down. You know, it's really, it's, it's crazy. So paint makes you forget your technique is what I mean, basically. It's tricky. very easy to forget your technique right so i'm only gonna put what i need on this eye i only want to put what i need and i'm gonna paint what's around the eye rather than the eye itself so we'll see where that ends up that's probably not going to be where it stays but um let's put this in that's way too bright. And it's kind of this color, so I probably should stick with that color scheme. There we go. So that may work for that eye. Maybe not. You know, we'll see. I'm keeping it very, very loose. And, and at this point, too, it's like all about just like adjusting slight things. Like even this will make a difference in that area now. Like slight changes to the shapes of that stuff will change the overall expression. And you might, I might need to move this. I might need to move it over a little bit or something, you know. Like that kind of a thing. I might need to move over some, so we'll see. Yeah, maybe more like that, we'll see. But I don't need to be super detailed there. And that's like, and the highlight also, like a lot of times I see this all the time. Like people, they're like, they get real excited about the highlight and they're like, let's put it in like that. Like that's, that's going to kill your value relationships if you do that. You want to put it in about where it needs to be on the, like it is on the original. So my son, like he can see so well at night. My wife, my wife can too. So like their pupils get so big often. It's crazy. Okay, this has a little bit of a lighter patch right there, yeah. Like on this side, it's not that bright, but they have like a lighter patch there. Colorful, like lighter patch. And this does come down a little bit, but not quite like that. Okay, let's see what else let's see what else you guys are saying. And if anybody has any questions or anything about what I'm doing or what I'm thinking or whatever, you know, fire away. Absolutely. Don't hold back, it's fine. You can ask me anything. This looks like him a little bit older. It's funny. Um Oh, hey, what's up, Nubovich? Thank you for the party raid. Nubovich with the raid. Thank you. Sorry, I just saw that. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody from there. Nubovich, I'm gonna hold on a second. I need to uh I'm adding you as a friend. I gotta return the favor. All right, awesome. Thank you. Welcome everybody. Yeah, we're working on a, a portrait painting for um Lightbox. And we're having some fun doing like an ala prima one where you can get some uh some looser strokes by the end okay let's see uh, it's crazy how um uh how ugly it looks until bam yes totally like a lot of the way that i paint like that's what i was saying too like why well, i wouldn't let when i had a portrait commission i wouldn't let people look at it before because it's like it really does look my like the way that i paint like and, and I like to work from general to specific like that. So when I do, it tends to look not so great when, uh, when like mid process, you know, um, it still looks okay, like structure wise, but 
it just looks a little bit like un unrefined or whatever um i need this to be actually look at this so he's got blue eyes right but this whole scene is more warm it's more like orange so he's got to actually i've got to actually put this in as a warmer gray um see it looks too blue actually like that it's amazing um you know don't put in blue just because you see blue you got to put in what what value and what color it needs to be not what you think it needs to be his eyes are much bigger yeah i'd like it's funny because i'm i'm making his head um his head like his features it looks like he's a little bit older <laughs> it's like he's gained like three or four years or something because i think i think and i think actually it's just that the eyes are a little bit small i think so this eye this eye specifically too would be probably much bigger and this could be a little bit bigger too That's a little better. They're still not 100%, but he kind of looks cross-eyed now that I don't have the inner, <laughs> that intersection. Intersection, not intersection. Okay, let's see here. This comes across. So that I can get it. Now I can get a really good idea of like how these shapes are reading and stuff. Okay, so let's see. So. Let's go here. And I don't want this to get too dark in here. I like this. I, I like the idea of this being a little bit looser over here. Like this shadow just being a little bit more grouped up. Like the far eye. It's nice to allow for some softer edges in there like that. Um, would be nice to indicate, you know, his, his eye color and stuff in there, but... I don't think I need to render a ton over there. Get it to work. See, the minute I start trying to like kind of clamp down on the area, it starts it starts not working like, you know, and so that's why I like to go from from general to specific. Okay, here we go. All righty. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, Sassy Raptor. Um, Lightbox is. Um, it's an expo, so it's Light Lightbox Expo. Let me show you. So this is what's going on right now. So it's Lightbox 2021. We did it the first time, uh, or Bobby did it, like um, Schoolism and Imaginism Studios are the ones putting it on. Um, you know, and uh, and there's so many people there, like people from Pixar. There's there's like people from all the in the games industry and all of that, like tons of, of presenters um tons of different things going on and typically this would be done in person but it's being done virtually now you know just because of, of all the craziness um let's see if we can see some uh let's see if we can see some of the people um yeah so here you go take a look um some different artists and you know once you get access to the site like there's a whole bunch but it's these like Thomas Flew Hardy and stuff. So I teach at Schoolism. There's a bunch of other Schoolism students. Uh, I'm sorry, instructors there and students, but um, lots of people from the industry. Pixar, DreamWorks, you know, um, I was just drawing, doing like a, a drawing jam on Magma. Um, uh, uh, like uh, like this kind of a thing. I was doing this with um, with some artists and and uh, one was from Riot Games and some other things like that. You can see that kind of thing. So it's it's a really really cool expo and it just it it links up artists and and it, it's it's a blast it's fun so i'm looking forward to next year being able to do it in person again doing it in person again let's do it you know i'm excited so yeah so welcome to my stream i 
I uh, I just moved to Texas, and so I was streaming a while um, a while back, and uh, I had to take a break, you know, to get settled here in Texas and stuff like that. And Lightbox was a great opportunity for me to uh, get back on the stream train and and uh, and be doing it again. So I'm I'm uh, I'm having fun. So there's gonna be more to come for me in uh, in the next months and stuff. I'm gonna be doing some drawing jams like that. We're gonna be doing some fun stuff. So, but yeah, welcome everybody. Thanks for stopping in. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Like the, it's it's a blast. It's a blast. The the expo is great, and there's so much. Like I think, I like even though today is the last day of it. Like today's the last day of Lightbox, but I still think. It would absolutely 100% be worth it to go back. Like, even if you paid for a ticket now, if you were interested, like to go back and because you can rewatch all that stuff. So if you were to buy a ticket, like there's a bunch of stuff that's still available on um, on there that'll be available like for a super long time. So um, you could go back and look at all the presenters and stuff like that. So if you're interested, you know, think about it because, uh, you know, it, it would be really, really cool to even even if you weren't able to attend all this stuff in person like it still would it still would be would be worth it i think so very very cool stuff so many good artists it's so funny cuz like all the presenters like i'm one of the presenters and there's a bunch i mean there's like a, a ton of artists that are presenting but we all are like sneaking and creeping into the other artists presentations too like everybody's so good it's just like it's uh you know it's been fun That's like when I went to um, to Ireland with Bobby for the uh, schoolism workshop, and you know Daniel Ariega was there, and a bunch of like there's a bunch of people, Tuna Bora, she was there, and like a bunch of like just artists who have done some crazy things, stuff for Pixar and different things like that. And I was I sat in on every single, I didn't go back to the hotel ever. I sat in on every single uh, session. I was like, this is gold, man. I'm not gonna, you know. I was like asking questions and stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to miss this. <laughs> Absolutely not. I got too much to learn. That's for sure. Okay, so let's see. Um... Oh yes, Sassy Raptor. That's right. See, that's been the, that's been the really good thing. I hope, I hope they do have. Um, I hope they do offer it, like like some virtual stuff. In, like even when they do it in person, I hope they do offer some virtual stuff in the future too. Like because it, it's been really good for that in that way. Like because it's hard. Like it's really hard. Like it, it's hard for me to pay. You know, it would be hard for me to pay if I'm I'm a presenter, so I don't have to pay to get out there. But like to get out there like and get a hotel and get some, like it's it's a lot of money that's a lot of money it's it's tricky and so um i i totally understand why people are like you know they struggle with that they're like ah oh, should i go and stuff and but it kind of gives you like artistic fuel for like the whole year i feel like like you just or at least six months like you're just you're just hyped after that you're like yes and you get to talk to people you get to make connections too that you wouldn't make otherwise and i don't know it's it's really good um it's it's been it's been great. There's so much stuff going on too. So much stuff going on. But yeah, you're right. I hope they I, I think they should have it'd be nice to have an online element and wonder if they could do both. Like have an online element as well as an in person thing. I don't know. I guess you'd have maybe have to make them like two separate events or whatever, but that would be really good to do, I think. Yeah, this is my son Sam that I'm painting, and I'm kind of adding some years to him. The eyes are a little bit um, smaller, and I could I could make them bigger. We could try doing that. Let's try making the eyes a little bigger and see what it, see what it does. So let's go a little bit uh, here. Let's move this layer down. Let's go a little bigger and see what happens. I could erase some of that, but. Yeah, it's a little more like him if I if I do that. 
can see that difference. And then this one would have to be bigger too. That could be better. It's kind of fun to see him like maybe with three, like like three years older or something. It might be what he looks like. That definitely looks more like his proportions though, with it a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit closer to him, I guess. Maybe I'll do this and so I don't age him too much. <laughs> okay. All right, so now I can start... I'm at the point now where I can I can start putting some finishing strokes in. Like, I think there'll, there'll be adjustments and things I need to shift and change in other areas, but... Um, but... You know, I can start putting some finishing strokes down. So, like, for instance, like a highlight here, I kind of want to do that in one stroke. You know, similar to how Sargent would do it. Um, you know, where it's like starting off, I need to be the right opacity. And I'll kind of make this a little bit more. See how I can kind of lay that stroke over top of that? Whoops. And... Sergeant, I, I'm fairly sure, like, when he would put down something, he would not just put it down and then leave it. Like, he, he made adjustments, you know? So he'd come in, and then he might be able to adjust the edge like that. But leaving those strokes and sort of placing them, it, it over top of a rendering like this, it, 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 it gives you that a la prima look. It gives the, uh, gives the viewer the look that it's almost like wet paint, you know? Um, when you do that and you don't touch it. But you have to choose the right value. See, like this area, if I go a little bit too bright, and I just come in like that, that's too bright, right? So I might be able to go a little brighter, but then I'm going to use touch sensitivity to get that to, to bleed and blend a bit more. Um, around the nose right here is a key area, too, that I could put in. This would be like you'd see Sergeant like loading this up, right, with like highlights. Like in a, up here, he'd be loading that up with highlights. Like you'd see like chunky paint there because he'd really want it to kind of catch the light you can place those and leave it like the highlight in the eyes too um, let's see and the ear too I could probably actually put something on the ear as well I don't want to draw too much attention over there but a little bit of a stroke like that so you could just leave that right if that works value wise you could just leave it Even an edge like this. A little better. This bleeds up into here. So people will see these like finishing strokes and think like, well, how, how is it so loose? And how are you able to like on this lip? Like, how are you able to get this highlight on the lip? Like right there? Like, how are you able to get that to work? And it's really what's underneath it. Like that all the transitions that are underneath it are the keys to that, to getting it to read properly. Same thing with the hair. I need proper values underneath this area of the hair in order to be able to kind of get it to work with a, you know, strokes like this. And hair is very tricky too because you, you don't want to go too far with it. You want to go just enough with it because it ends up looking a little bit better if you if you don't try to render every hair and every, you know, if you deal with it as a mass. And let's see, like this edge in here is, is really interesting to me. Like it starts to, the hair starts to almost like bleed into the forehead there. And this silhouette of the edge of the hair here is very important, like right there, to convey that that's where the hair kind of creeps over right there. So this like shadow, and then this orange light kind of coming up like that, will add some context to that area. 
reddish orange or whatever. Okay, let's see here. And give this a shot. If you guys are, are out there, uh, like, you know, grab that reference. You can see the link up uh, up top. Grab that reference and give this a shot. I love seeing people, you know, do the portraits along with me. Seeing what they come up with. You guys always do awesome. This highlight will transition down it, it there's a softer edge into the stuff that's below it so i'm gonna kind of and i love like the color interaction that just happened there on that cheek that's really that's fun there's like a blue and a green and a lot of things going on there it's really interesting this needs to be a softer transition right here and this is a little bit of a hard edge too so i'll adjust that much better this will get a bit darker. That section. Yeah, and I can come back to this highlight that I placed. And like I said, doctor it a bit, right? So just make it a bit brighter there. And context is everything. Like when you're trying to make an ala prima painting too and make it look more loose, Context is huge um, because if like if you looked at this hair apart from the context of this painting, it would look bizarre, right? It wouldn't look right. It wouldn't look real. It wouldn't look like hair. It wouldn't you know wouldn't have any of that. Um, you know you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to piece it together if you just like it would look like a modern art painting or something like when you did that. But because of the context of the face, the hair makes more sense. So oftentimes like you can get away with leaving something looser, and you want to be on the lookout for that if if you have the context like to describe it. So, um, you know, like if, uh, let's just say you have a brick wall that you painted or something and there's graffiti on it. Well, the graffiti can be very, very loose. You know, people will know what, what, you're, what you're putting on there, right? They'll, they'll get it because they understand that there's a wall there. And so the graffiti can be very loose and broken and pe it, people will understand that's graffiti. It's amazing, um, just, just based on context, so. You know, if you were to take this hair apart from the face, it's going to look bizarre and weird. Same thing, the graffiti might look weird if it wasn't on a wall and was apart from things and you didn't have a way to kind of, you know, understand what it was. So a lot of it comes down to context. One thing that's kind of throwing me for a loop is this outer edge of this nose. It's a tricky one. And I'm sure like after I after I end the stream and I come back and look at this tomorrow, I'll see all the things that I, I'll be like, oh man, you know, oh no, like I, I, I should have fixed that or I should have fixed this. That's always the way it is. If you ever have to do a portrait commission or a portrait for somebody, make sure you give yourself days to work on it. Don't, don't, uh, because there's a lot that you can see by just going to bed at night and then waking up the next morning. You're like, oh, yeah, okay, this is this is off and this is off and this is off, you know. Let's get this a little bit lighter in there. Let's put some highlights on here. Let's put some Sergeant-esque highlights on here. Boom. Boom. Not that bright. That's a little too bright, value-wise. That's a little too bright as well. We'll just tone it back a bit. And see, then I can keep this so loose, but still get it to read properly. This is darker, too, in here. That section here is darker. Let's 
and I'll make this a bit darker. That little highlight right there is we could do a little bit more to the uh, shirt too, just to kind of bring it up slightly. This is a secondary area though, so it's not a huge deal, but. Try to bring that up and I don't want this to take uh attention away from the face, but we can do this. Alright, let's see what you guys are saying. Alright. Um much needed creativity fuel in these quarantine times. Oh, for real, sassy raptor. Absolutely hundred percent. Yeah, it's like you know, when we're stuck I mean, it's like everybody's on uh on um you know, uh, like everybody's in what's a, a solitary confinement. I was trying to think of what it is in jail. Like it's sol everybody's in solitary confinement, you know? And so artists, like we generally like to be, you know, in our studios painting and drawing and stuff. Like we generally like that, but not all day, every day for like a long time, you know? I mean, I mean, some of us maybe, but, but a lot of us will, will, not like that you know we'll want want some change wanted to change up a bit you know <laughs> yeah and it's been it's been crazy i agree with you all right let's grab some of these values and kind of See, context is what's allowing this to look real. Uh, uh, you know, like not necessarily real, but like get the shirt to work. It's context. It's all context. Because this doesn't, I mean, that doesn't look like a real shirt at all. Right? You know, it doesn't look like that at all. But but the context allows you to know what it is. And this would be definitely going from darker to lighter on this. Like on this side. So we definitely have like. Values a little bit more like that. Okay. And I need to work on this silhouette over here. It's another reason that I just go to areas like that. I skip around a little bit so I can look back at the silhouette, look at like at the drawing and adjust things a little bit. Let's see. That's a little better. That's a little better. Okay. I hear lyrics, which means I've gone into the uh, territory, which is going to get me, you know, muted. So here we go. Let's look at this one. I don't know this one, actually. Ocularium, this is called. That sounds interesting. But I think, it, I know there's not a very clear shadow here, but it might be interesting to make a shadow there for the hair to kind of imply that the hair, you know, goes over top there. I think you get away, I could get away with that. Yeah, because it's kind of, well, I want it to be a little more loose there, but kind of weird in reality how it just kind of comes down like a that shape is it's kind of odd okay values 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 to look at this area if i were to come in and all of a sudden start doing this and make this super bright come in and and feel like i need that to be super bright like that's going to kill that area going to kill that area 
You gotta be very careful. Let's get this transition on the nose to be a little bit smoother. I think down here looks a little weird. Like around the around the uh the mouth down there. This needs to transition more smoothly. Okay, so we're almost at three o'clock. I'm just gonna add a couple more strokes to this and then I wanna do, uh, I wanna spin that wheel for the prizes for you guys. So I'm gonna take a look at everybody who has subscribed and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna spin the wheel for a prize for each of those people. And some of them are funny. <laughs> we're gonna have fun, we're gonna have fun with this over the months, this new prize wheel. Trust me, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. It's gonna be hilarious. There's some on there that, that you guys are gonna crack up. <laughs> All right. So here, let's let's uh, let me just put a couple like finishing strokes on this, and down here, like maybe like just get this to look a little bit more resolved down here. I, I am gonna make this like a vignette, so I'll probably have this be a little bit more broken up down here, kind of looking more like this. Or actually, I could just do this. Have this cleared. Yeah. Have it be a little bit more broken up. Okay. So there we go. You know, a perfect portrait? No, but it's 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 definitely like hopefully is going to help you guys with the methodology and the way to approach this. But I still think it does capture a lot of what I was seeing there in that lighting. Um, color wise, it captures a lot of what I wanted to capture with, uh, with him there. Um, there's a lot that's working about it. Um, and the proportion, you know, is, is like, I'd need more time to work on that proportion to move things around and get it. If I, if it was, if it was all about the likeness, um, but either way though, it's, it's been a blast. It's been super, super fun. So you get, at the very least, you get to see my process. You get to see the way that I'm working on this stuff. Um, the way that I approach things and and the order that I do it in and um, and and really just the concept of working from general to specific is a very powerful one like you'll it'll help you a lot um, don't just dive in and start doing all the details and all the little features like let them sort of emerge on their own and if you think of it that way like them just emerging on their own it's going to help you a lot um, let me just I just want to do a couple more things to resolve this. I'm going to have, I'm going to come back to this. Like, like I said, give myself some time away from it. Then I'll come back to it and see what looks weird to me. I'm sure there's some weird things still. And then, um, and then, uh, you know, finish it up. I mean, there's definitely some weird things. I'm actually seeing them in here and stuff, but, um, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I'll come, I'll come back to this and, and make some adjustments and, and,